Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Arlington Board of Selectmen meeting for February 23rd, 2015. It's a little past 7.15, and I do call this meeting to order. I would like to remind everyone that ACMI is filming our meeting tonight, so please uh, smile while on camera. Um, that being said, we will jump right into it with a uh, proclamation for White Ribbon Day. Um, Joe and Elaine. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me here this evening. I really appreciate it. I've been an advocate in Arlington for many years for women who have been involved in domestic violence. I think it's important work and it's part of my core. A couple of weeks ago, I saw a notice in the Arlington Advocate about the Concord Rotary Club honoring Craig Norberg Bohm for co-founding and coordinating the White Ribbon Campaign in Massachusetts. I had heard of the campaign before and I knew it had something to do with men preventing violence against women. I learned, wanted to learn more. The White Ribbon Campaign was created in 1991 in Montreal to speak out against violence against women. It was on the second anniversary of one man's massacre of 14 women. It has now spread to 60 countries. It is the world's largest movement of men and boys working to end violence against women and girls to promote gender equality, healthy relationships, and a new view, vision of masculinity. When I spoke to Craig at the end of the forum, he said he had discussed the campaign with none other than Joe Coro and Kim K. Holt. I don't know Kim, but I know She's Charlotte. right here. No? Right. Yeah. Oh, how nice. I didn't realize that. OK. Um, but I was delighted that he was interested. And I was very pleased that he has put forth a proclamation which he will address later. Men are a very important part of the solution to domestic violence. I can talk until I'm blue in the face with women about finding their voice and speaking up for themselves and taking care of themselves. But if men aren't part of the equation, there will be no real solution. I saw this great quote in the New York Times yesterday. I said, ha, this was made for me. And it's by the basketball coach who was much loved, Dean Smith. He says, there's a point in every contest when sitting on the sidelines is not an option. Now, domestic violence is not a contest, but it's a challenge. And this is that point in our challenge. I invite everyone, especially the men of Arlington, to stand up and take the pledge to be part of the solution to ending violence against women. The pledge is, from this day forward, I promise to be part of the solution in ending violence against women. It's pretty simple. Wouldn't it be nice if we all could say that? There will be a state-wide <coughs> proclamation event at the State House on Thursday, March 5th, at 1 o'clock. The Boston Celtics will be hosting White Ribbon Night at their game on March 16th, and they'll be distributing pledge cards and white ribbons on the concourse during the day, during the game. A forum is being planned, and we will do that at the end of this month sometime, but the details have to be worked out. So I will keep you all informed and hope I see many men there. And Joe, you have a proclamation to read. I do, and I want to thank you. Thank you to the board for supporting this, and, and thank you, Elaine, for all of your work, and Kim. Kim um, had uh, first introduced me to Craig Norbert Baum, who was actually a longtime Arlington resident and is the uh, executive director of the um, men's initiative of uh, Jane Doe Inc. Um, and I think it was all it was you know brought home very poignantly to us that this um, the, the scourge of this issue when um, with Newland Road last year, but obviously it happens in much more private way, shall we say. And I, I think the first night I ever met Elaine was um, was when you were honored by the Martin Luther King Observance Committee, you and, and Mary Diced and uh, Sue, Sue Culhane was it? Yeah. Sue, um, for uh, the work that you've done so many years. So uh, the proclamation, um, which uh, uh, Kim and, and Elaine helped me with, uh, reads as follows. Whereas the impacts of domestic violence reach many segments of our community, Regardless of gender identity, age, race, ethnic origin, sexual orientation, or disability, and whereas the particularly pressing problem of violence against women, sexual assault, and domestic violence 
is recognized by both women and men in our community as a matter of deep concern. And whereas the town of Arlington, our community safety and health and human services professionals, and our residents have exercised leadership in raising awareness about domestic violence, encouraging us all to be upstanders, supporting survivors, and holding offenders accountable. And whereas the White Ribbon Campaign was started in Canada in 1991 to urge men to speak out in opposition to violence against women, and whereas the White Ribbon Campaign has spread to 60 countries and garnered 5 million signatures of support from concerned men, and whereas the White Ribbon Day pledge states from this day forward, I promise to be part of the solution in ending violence against women, and whereas the White Ribbon Campaign has been endorsed by public officials and leaders in law enforcement, business, education, health care, and athletics from throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as a means of supporting a comprehensive approach to domestic violence. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Selectmen do hereby express support for efforts, both local and beyond, to combat the scourge of violence against women, and be it further resolved that March 5, 2015, is proclaimed as White Ribbon Day in the town of Arlington, and that all residents are encouraged to pay fitting observance thereof, and be it further resolved that white ribbons, along with a copy of the White Ribbon Day Pledge, will be available in the Selectman's Office during the week of White Ribbon Day for all municipal officials and employees and members of the public who wish to express visible support. I do so move. And second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I um, would like to thank, uh, yes, yeah, please. please. <laughs> and um, as Joe's doing that, I would like to thank um, Elaine and Kim for bringing this to our attention. Um, can I make a quick comment? Uh, you certainly can, right uh, in one second. Okay. Thank you. Um, and uh, this is obviously an easy one for all of us to support, and it's such an important cause, and I'm glad that we can uh, play a role in it. That being said, I invite Kim to come on up and address us. I want to thank Elaine for bringing this this year because I took on a new job this year and although Joe and I had met over the summer about making this happen, I kind of lost track of it and let the ball drop. But I wanted everyone to know that this is eight out of the last ten years that Arlington has actually passed a proclamation for White Ribbon Day and that two years in the late 2000s we ran a small program at lunchtime at the high school passing out pledge cards and getting pledge posters signed and giving out ribbons at lunchtime to high school students. It was led by some athletic leader students at the high school under Charlie Skidmore's leadership. And I'd really like to see us between now and next year figure out a way to grow a program in Arlington around this, not just to do a proclamation, but to really do a program around this campaign. So thank you for doing the proclamation and thank you so much, Elaine and Joe. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, thank you. Discussion from my colleagues? Seeing none. Further discussion from the crowd? Seeing none. We had a motion and a second. We took a vote. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, moving on. For approval, establishment of a Veterans Council, uh, Christine Bongiorno and Jeffrey Chungo. Thank you both very much for being with us tonight. Good to see thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening. So uh, as Director of Veterans Services, uh, there, there was a memo sent forth uh, that you have uh, outlining our request for uh, the establishment of a Veterans Council. So there are a number of issues that, that I deal with on a regular basis that I would like to see support from an independent council, a uh, number related to um, potential financial involvement uh, through grants for monuments, uh, establishing some some uh, policies and procedures for graves, monuments, flags, etc. cetera. Um, so th the proposal was for a seven person council, uh, the majority to be veterans or a relative of a, vet of a veteran, uh, comprised of a mix of local business leaders, um, residents, veterans uh, from different service organizations if possible, uh, to come together to meet to, uh, to tackle the issues that were outlined in the memo. Thank you very much. Questions from the board? Dan. Uh, thanks. I think the council makes a lot of sense, and I definitely understand why you're trying to create it. Uh, one of the issues that you listed is the, the short projects that you wanted to, I've just, I'm not familiar with, and that's the, the dedication of the new undesignated veterans lot 
I'm just mm. curious, what's the, what's the, what's that relate to? Uh, at Mount Pleasant Cemetery, there's an undesignated veterans lot huh. that has been a, 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 kind of established, set aside for operation, well, starting from the Gulf War through all of our existing conflicts uh, for Arlington veterans. So it's still unnamed and it's still undesignated. So that would be one of the, one of the projects for the council to come up with an appropriate name mm -hmm. for this veterans lot because it, it encompasses a lot of different military operations and periods in, in mm -hmm. our history. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Diane. Um, first, I'd like to move approval. Second. Um, and secondly, um, I think this is a fantastic idea. I, I know when we march in parades and um, Memorial Day and the like, um, we visit different areas. And, you know, I know I've taken stock of some, as well as I know Arlington, you have an untapped pool of resources when the Vietnam Veterans um, Memorial was started and eventually uh, was placed in Mount Pleasant. It really came out of um, a group of veterans as well as, um, I believe, some classmates of um, Jack Hurd's brother, I think it was David Williams, um, and I was amazed by a group of probably eight, no more than that, that you know didn't have any official title. Dennis Corbett was their Vietnam vet um, at what they were able to get done, and they kind of just did it on their own on a wing and a prayer. Um, so now ha formalizing this and having an entity that you know the town's really putting its stamp on, um, I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, I look forward to any ideas that you have in terms of um, upkeep, uh, anything new that needs to be established. I think it's another great way that us talking about this will get out for any veterans, you know, whether they be from World War II all the way up to the current conflict. My dad gets mad when I say conflict. He's like, I was in Korea. There were real bullets flying. But um, um, I, I really commend you. Anything, of course, any of the board members can do. And like I said, I don't think it'll be hard for you to find um, resources in the community in terms of getting people to volunteer for this. And I, I want to thank you and thank you for your service. And, and thank you, Christine. Once again, we see you. Thank you very much, Diane. Uh, further discussion from the board? Seeing none. I am. Um, I just want to say I think this is a tremendous idea as well, and I'm uh, particularly excited about um, w what this council comes up with for um, revisions to the Monument Park. I, um, I think that's a really untapped asset in town, and I um, look forward to uh, expanding that and um, giving it the upkeep it deserves, I think. Um, is, with that being said, is there any discussion from the crowd on this agenda item? Seeing none, um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much for your time. <coughs> Excuse me. Moving forward, we have the consent agenda. Minutes of meetings from the, our February 12, 2015 meeting and a reappointment to the Cyrus Dallin Art Museum Board of Trustees, Dan Johnson. Um, motion and... Move approval. Move approval. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Move approval. Second. Anyone? Second. Thank you. Um, is any discussion on this from the board? Anyone in the crowd here to discuss any of these items? <coughs> Seeing. Go through it. Well, I'll just mention. Hello, Amy Taberner with the Cyrus Dallin Art Museum. We're really excited to have Dan Johnson renew his appointment with our board. He serves on our. Um, our nonprofit board and is very involved in our upcoming, um, our ongoing fundraising efforts, but he's also with Gerald, uh, Jerry Tremblay, um, serves on both our, um, our town board and our board of uh, directors. Um, and I can speak to the next thing on the agenda. Excellent. Yeah, but just let us take a vote on that. Uh, further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Moving on, appointments to the Cyrus Dallin Art Museum Board of Trustees of Chris Costello, please. Hello again. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, exceptionally excited to um, recommend Chris Costello to um, the Board of Trustees for the Cyrus Dallin Art Museum. With our uh, recent strategic planning, we reorganized um, the volunteers um, and um, put out a request for new members of the board and a number of new volunteers, 
Chris was among the first to um, volunteer his time and has been exceptionally involved and helpful and his experience is um, incredible and very relevant. So I'd like to just introduce you to Chris Costello. Thank you very much. Hey Chris. Hello everyone, how are you? Thank you for being with us. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, how you come to find out about the Cyrus Allen Art Museum? Yeah, uh, well, I've, uh, we've been living in Arlington for about uh, 10 years or so. Uh, I had taken a visit to the, um, uh, the Augusta St. Gaudens Museum, which uh, is their contemporaries, uh, Cyrus Allen. Uh, very impressed with uh, the museum up there. This is in New Hampshire. And really shortly afterwards, I literally stumbled on the museum in the center. I did not even know it existed. And my wife and I were there and we t took a tour and I was just very excited about the works that were on display. Um, he's a very prominent uh, sculptor uh, for the turn of the century and um, I was just very uh, excited that this museum was here in Arlington, my, my own town. And then uh, I think, you know, a few years later uh, the, the um, uh, opportunity uh, arose in the, the Arlington Advocate and as soon as I, I saw it, I wanted to, to extend my services, volunteering, and because uh, I'm very interested in sculpture, I'm very interested in art. Uh, I've been a graphic designer uh, and, and illustrator, artist for many years, and I think this is a great opportunity just to, uh, there's a passion there that I, aside of my current job as a senior designer, um, this is a little bit more kind of with my, within my passion, within my uh, uh, desire to kind of promote the arts for one thing, to be involved in some way to, uh, even as an artist, to uh, use my abilities to promote the museum. Um, and I'm just excited about the opportunity of really moving it along, possibly uh, finding a new a building, a bigger space. Um, I mean, I'm excited about doing graphic design services, which was the or original call, but I mean, anything else that I'm able to, to give, um, uh, I'm also very excited to just just to further the mission of of uh, bringing uh, attention to uh, this great artist. Thank you so. very much. Uh, you're certainly uh, joining the board at a pretty exciting time with uh, mm -hmm. all the new strategic plan um, coming forward not that long ago. So thank you very much, um, Joe. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd say uh, Chris is actually a, a, a neighbor. Uh, our girls have uh, grown up together. And oh. I might embarrass him a little bit uh, on this. He, he's been a great neighbor. He throws the best potluck dinners. I can tell you. <laughs> um, and uh, although you can tell he's very humble, he's actually done a lot in the community up until now. He and his wife, and uh, I think a lot of us know Woody Geisman from Del Fuego's and Right Turn fame, had the Stratton experience, the uh, parents yeah. band, which was. Uh, that was a lot of really one of the, the, the best cover band this side of Spy Pond, because I don't want to <laughs> diss the Hardy Boys. But, <laughs> but an excellent, uh, excellent band. Um, I know you're very active in one of our newest worship community, which is rejuvenating the Pleasant Street Church, which is a, a, another landmark in Arlington uh, Center. Um, but specifically, I wanted to point out that um, Chris is very humble about this, but... Um, he shares something in common with Cyrus Dallin in that he has, um, he has um, created a number of pieces of art of, of great Americans in great places that have uh, won national uh, attention. Some of you may be p carrying his art in your pockets. Um, and I'm sorry, to bury you. I know we've discussed this before <laughs> and I was so happy to find out which one it was. Um, Chris was uh, the designer of the uh, uh, Great Smoky Mountains National Park Quarter, U.S. Quarter, which so in the, in the National Park Quarter series, um, as well as a number of uh, collectible coins, Eleanor Roosevelt, Edith Roosevelt, and Native American, which if any of you know Dallin's art that's very consistent with some of the themes of, of great uh, Americans and the Native Americans and such. And lastly, of course, I just wanted to say, I note that the collectible silver dollar of the uh, 2013 Girl Scouts of the USA Centennial. I just wanted to say, Sierra will be delivering your cookies soon. So <laughs> <laughs> she has them in the living room. So uh, thank you, Chris, for, for uh, adding your, your talent. Hey, yeah, I don't know if you've paid yet. I got to check the sheet. <laughs> got a couple dollars. Right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Quarters. yeah, I'll take one of those $10 coins that costs $1,800 on eBay. So. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Joe. Thank, thank you. you. Um, yeah, further motion. discussion from the board? Did you make a motion? Oh, I move, I move approval. Yeah. Thank you. And a second? Second. A motion, a second. Further discussion? 
Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Close. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. And now, moving on to our uh, warrant article hearings. Um, so I'd like to um, thank everyone for being here um, that has a role in our warrant article hearings um, as we prepare for our upcoming town meeting. Um, of course, um, in thanking everybody, I'd, that includes those who submit um, articles for consideration, uh, those who provide comments, and of course, um, our staff in the Board of Selectmen office who perform quite a lot of work to enable this to take place. And this uh, wouldn't be able to um, go on as smoothly as it does without all their efforts. Um, for this year's hearing process, um, we're going to um, have a few changes from previous years. I'm going to ask that each presenter makes their presentation within 15 minutes. Um, at the 12 minute mark, I will inform the speaker of the time and ask that you begin your concluding remarks. Uh, following your presentation, we will have a question and answer period um, for the board members and the presenter. At the conclusion of that question and answer period, I will ask if any members of the audience would like to comment on the warrant before us. And you will have five minutes to make your remarks, which will also be followed by questions from the board. Um, all, after all of the members of the public who want to speak are given the opportunity, um, the board will deliberate and vote on the matter. I appreciate everyone's cooperation in this process and uh, look forward to uh, getting this going. Our um, first warrant article is Article 8, a bylaw amendment uh, limiting the speaking time for announcements and reports. The lead sponsor is Mr. Schlickman. What? <laughs> Just 15 minutes? <laughs> I wanted to read to you the transcript of town meeting announcements from the 2014 annual town meeting. I can't do that in 15 minutes. <laughs> On a couple of nights last year, we came perilously close to having the announcements bump up against the 9.30 break. Members of Congress can pack a mighty punch in their one-minute statements. Just one minute at the podium can point us to announcements and reports with more extensive text in email or on the web. Literature can be placed on the seats of town hall. Trust me, there are times when people need good reading material in town <laughs> meeting. More extensive reports and the Uncle Stam song could be taped at the Acme th uh, studio for multiple joyous replays. Our bylaw regulates speaking time on the business of the meeting, but not on remarks with no relevance to the warrant. Seems kind of backwards to me, and I hope you agree. One minute. Thank you very much. Mr. Schlickman, if you could stay at the microphone in case we have any questions. Um, questions from the board? Dan. No. Uh, just, I, Paul, uh, I definitely understand the thrust of the argument. Did you have a specific recommendation in mind? And Well, I would recommend uh, limiting uh, non-relevant remarks to one minute, but it's up to the meeting to decide the number. I'm just putting in place the article to make it uh, uh, possible. Okay. So, given that, that, I mean, that done deal, that article is on the warrant, but mm -hmm. the, this body has to make a recommendation on mm -hmm. what we should put like forward as a motion mm -hmm. and so your your thought is one minute yeah to amend it so that we add another sentence that would say uh, remarks that do not relate to um, actionable items would be limited to one minute and of course all of this is subject to the uh, vote of the meeting to extend it if they so choose okay do you mind if I keep going Please do. Um, so uh, things like so for instance the a finance committee report, which is significantly more lengthy, but related to the uh, action of the, you just think that that would be one minute, but Mr. Tosti would ask for an extension, is that? Well, it's certainly something that's actionable as well, so that when we come down to the budgets, he can certainly just do it then, uh, do, do it then yeah. or you know, point people to the written report. And I'm sure that if the town wanted to hear a summary of the um, the, the budget, the finance committee report earlier than that, they could vote to give him five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, Dan? Dan. Um, <clears throat> first, I'd like to move approval and, and expand upon the conversation that um, Mr. Dunn had. Um, 
I think this is a fantastic idea once again. I said to Paul, he always comes up with the ideas that I should have thought of and uh, he puts it forth before town meeting. I think it will be a great conversation for town meeting to have. Mm -hmm. I know last year I was sitting there the first two nights. The first night was 9-12 mm -hmm. before we actually got to the business and the second night it was like 9-28. It was just about at 9-30 mm -hmm. um, that we were still on announcements. Um, I actually have a question um, to Mr. Schlickman as well as to my colleagues. Um, there, we did receive correspondence from the town moderator who indicated he was anticipating um, putting forth a, a rule regulation with, with his town moderator hat of up to four minutes um, and that perhaps this wasn't needed. I, I would like to, in some form, move favorable action because that's great that the current moderator will do that, but um, it won't carry over um, until the future. So do you have any thoughts on the one minute versus four minute? I, uh, personally speaking, I think that you could do most anything in one minute. I mean, uh, unless it was something totally dramatic that, that you need approval for, uh, if it has nothing to do with the warrant. The town meeting has become something of a captive audience, and if I'm going to tell yeah, you sure. that it's a wonderful time to go out to Spy Pond and clean out the weeds, I could do that in a minute. Uh, there's very few things that we do on the floor of town meeting that don't relate to the business at hand that can't be done in one minute. Now, if the, ta if the town meeting can very readily amend this to two or three or four or 17, whatever the meeting wants to do. Uh, but what we're doing here is giving the meeting a forum for actually inserting this into the bylaw. And um, Mr. Chairman, through you, yes. would I be correct in that, say the Board of Selectmen voted this, for f we voted it for four minutes, it passes through town meeting, that that would be the governing rule versus the moderator and his, um, I don't want to say power, his responsibilities. Could he say, no, I'd prefer to go to one, prefer to go to eight. But once this goes through town meeting and is certified by the attorney general, is that the gui guiding law? Um, that's generally correct. So right now the town moderator has discretion. This would be limiting that, limiting that discretion to a certain degree certainly feasible that the town moderator could rule certain things that are so far out of scope that they wouldn't even be eligible for that four minutes. Okay. I guess my motion would be trying to seek compromise as well as my personal opinion that I'm definitely in favor of this. It would be f favorable action with the recommended four minute um, from the town moderator with the caveat that he was saying, you know, perhaps this isn't necessary and I respect that, but I'd like to. So that would be my motion for now. Thank you very much, Diane. Uh, I'll second for discussion, for Thank further you. discussion. Kevin. So, um, you all know what I do for a living, and <laughs> one of the most important things I try and teach people is less is more. Mm -hmm. But one minute is a little bit too less, in my opinion. Picture the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, State of the Town. A one minute is a little restrictive. You know, I can tell you when I last did mine, it was 10 minutes, and I rehearsed for three hours to try and get what I wanted to say, and I did. I, I did fit it within the uh, 10 minutes. I'm not saying it was good, but <laughs> I know how tough it was to get what I thought I wanted to say about you know the past, the present, and the future of the town of Arlington. So I just want to say I would support Diane Mahan's motion that we uh, approve, we rep recommend favorable action with a four minute limit. If that's what the moderator feels that people can speak to, you know, last year we did a proclamation for Elizabeth Carr Jones uh, and Ed Starr for their service to uh, the town. We have a unique group there, and it's a, it's an opportunity for announcements and for uh, proclamations and for you know. Does it go on too long? Yes. Are there speakers I'd like to limit? Many. Uh, <laughs> Do I want to, do people want to limit me? Obviously, uh, but so anyhow, I just support the idea of uh, doing this to be uh, consistent with town meeting, but I, I honestly think that a chairman should have more than four minutes to talk about the state of the town. Uh, I, uh, Mr. Greeley, I might point out that the state of the town address is in our bylaw and is often an article, so it wouldn't be co uh, covered by announcements or remarks. It's not a warrant. Uh, it, it's it's uh, covered elsewhere in the well, bylaw. Thank you. So, um, 
Thank you. Is it your uh, intention, Paul, that there be a mechanism here for the town meeting to, to suspend this? Because I'm not sure if town meeting can suspend this through a, um, you know, through a two-thirds vote unless we write that into the bylaw. We, we just piggyback it on the existing bylaw, right. which governs speaking time. Just to add a sentence regarding non um, relevant uh, remarks, and that part of the bylaw does provide a provision for the meeting. Permission can, of the meeting, yeah. yeah. Okay, I think I'm inclined to support the, the, the motion then for, for four minutes, because I'd note that it wasn't just the moderator didn't pick that number willy nilly, he actually polled. Mm -hmm. The meeting at, at the end last year with the electronic voting and some came in three and some came in five and it basically it came down around four seemed to be the general tenor so I think I think it is reasonable to put that out and and see what town meeting this year wishes to do I am um, yes I I'm inclined to agree with it as well I um, per, perhaps using the phrase um, you know not to exceed four minutes and under the jurisdiction of the town moderator to limit further um, if need be something along those lines um, Dan uh, I'll, I'll support four minutes I would also support a shorter time thank you um, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Um, would anyone else in the audience like to address this uh, warrant thank you Bill Bill Hayner town meeting member uh, I think one of the most frustrating things is uh, all these boards work very hard, produce phenomenal reports, and then some of them get up there and read the entire report. I think they do them, uh, themselves a disservice by people being turned off to it. So I would ask you, uh, and I, from what I see, you are supporting this. Uh, the reports are there for us to read, and they're really good. And uh, again, thank you. Thank you very much. Questions for Bill? Seeing none. Um, further discussion from the audience? Seeing none, um, we have a motion on the table and it is seconded. Is there any further discussion from the board? I'm seeing none. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. One thing that I've uh, found useful in the past is when I'm doing Warren articles is confirming with town council that he had all the information that he needed since he gets to do all the heavy, heavy lifting here. Thank you very much. You know, I actually had that written down and I just didn't. <laughs> um, are you all set, Doug? I'm all set. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And please, um, as this is my um, first time um, chairing the Warren hearings, I would appreciate any feedback from my colleagues. Moving on, um, Article 9, bylaw amendment for the Human Rights Commission. Thank you, Marion. Mr. Harrington. Thank you very much. It, uh, I, I would like to know. Um, Stephen Harrington, town meeting member. Oh. I'll just hold it like this. Okay. So I'm going to give you a hypothetical. Imagine if you had someone come in here that asked for a reasonable accommodation. Maybe they had a mobility issue and they wanted to be able to sit at a chair. Maybe they were in a wheelchair. And maybe the board decided they weren't going to accommodate that issue, that they weren't going to accommodate that request. And um, that's not what happened tonight. You saw that Marianne was very willing to do that. But it shouldn't have to be a request. And maybe 18% of the population that is mobility challenged, one out of five, imagine one of you being challenged to stand up at a podium or stand up with nowhere to rest their papers. Who would take that complaint? Who could compel the board of selectmen to make this type of reasonable accommodation something that was standard, didn't have to be requested? It's the Human Rights Commission. And so if there was a Americans with Disability Act complaint, the Human Rights Commission would be the one to do it. In fact, what I'd call a muscular Human Rights Commission would have watched, as I have over the years, that there are many people who appear here who are mobility challenged. And maybe they don't know to ask for accommodation. You're the only board in town that I'm aware of that doesn't actually provide a place for someone to sit a place for someone to rest their papers, a place for someone to put their water down. And so I'd like to see this permanently. 
shouldn't have just been done when I walked in the door and had to request it. You all sitting down. You should allow people to make it very comfortable for them to appear. And so this anecdote is just representative of the great civil rights issue of our time. And that is the de facto discrimination that is carried out through policies and procedures of public entities. Whether that's a policy of a school district suspending minority students, having suspension policies that have a disparate impact on them. Whether it's unequal justice in policies of stop and frisk, whether it is a recalcitrant board that just is tone deaf to that people have a right to be accommodated. And I'd like to see a human rights commission that proactively address those issues. Right now, I think we're all pretty aware that the Human Rights Commission doesn't really deal with that. In fact, in discussions, um, I just want to make sure that it's clear to the audience at home, um, before I came here, none of you really approached me about this warrant article. And the only employees of the town that I've discussed it with has really been at my initiative. We don't have the executive director of the Human Rights Commission here. She was here earlier. When I talked to both the executive director and the town council, they told me pretty clearly that the Human Rights Commission didn't have jurisdiction over the school department, although it's somewhat in the bylaw. And there's really no teeth. There's nothing to compel a public entity to comply with the laws. And so I think that that's an important thing you don't want to have the answer being that if you don't like the accommodations that we provide you, file a federal lawsuit for an ADA complaint. You don't want to have the answer be if you don't like the policies of the school department, file a lawsuit through the Justice Department. I think what you want to have is that this is something that's handled within the town. And that's really what this bylaw is about. It's about addressing de facto discrimination by public entities in a proactive way and in a way to make sure that those policies are addressed, not just to talk about them. And so really, in this case, there's really three steps. And I wish we could get beyond the first step tonight, but I don't think it's going to happen. You have to acknowledge that this may be, this could be, this may in the future be an issue that you're going to want to have a tool that can deal with it. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Arrington. Questions from the board? Dan. Uh, similar to the question I had for Mr. Slickman, is there, a specific, like, is there a specific proposal that you're looking for us to approve for the to propose? Like, what's, the, what's the motion that you're seeking us to ask town meeting to approve? Uh, you asked me here. I don't know what you want to do. I mean, for me, you have to acknowledge. And Kathy Bodie, the superintendent of the schools, acknowledged publicly and to me privately and to other people that their policies do discriminate. And they're trying to work towards it. Now, I have no idea what you want to do, but acknowledgement, maybe you should take a vote to acknowledge that de facto discrimination is an issue that this board cares about and that you'd like to see town meeting, it's a town meeting committee, it's not a board of selecting committee, and that you'd like to see town meeting have an open and frank discussion about it. To go from acknowledgement to understanding is a lot of work, and you know, I'm not here to do that tonight. And then to go from understanding to actually to come up with solutions, that's what I'll be presenting to the town meeting. So you can take whatever vote I would recommend that you take a vote to acknowledge that this is an issue that you're concerned with. Joe. I'm struggling with this, Mr. Harrington. I, I think that much of what you've said has, has merit. It sounds great. But I'm struggling with it. Four years ago, on your blog, you characterized the Human Rights Commission as an Orwellian club. And now you want to, I think you're asking to give them additional powers. Excuse me, I'm sir? Sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Harrington, you will not interrupt when he's uh, talking. S 
So now I'm not clear what you're asking. Typically with a 10 registered voter article, you come with a proposal that you would like us to take action on. And I don't see a specific proposal here. I think I hear you saying that you want the Human Rights Commission to have additional powers. I think that's what I hear you saying. But they haven't asked for them. I don't know that they really need them. And the commissioners I've talked to don't want them. A core part of the, and I think my colleagues know, I was on the Human Rights Commission for several years as a town manager appointee and, and approved by this board. And part of the bylaw talks about cooperatively working with the town agencies towards, uh, towards solutions. You'll know that a lot of uh, human rights commissions in other towns are actually referred to as the Human Relations Commission. And so through several decades of work, the Human Rights Commission in this town has built up a cooperative relationship with the police department. I think Chief Ryan, we're very lucky to have him still here. He often used the, uh, the uh, commission to make referrals of, of issues that arose. Um, and vice versa, when there were issues that really were outside the realm of what the commission could reasonably do, uh, referrals were made, were made to, the, um, to, to, to the, um, uh, the police department themselves. Over the decades, a liaison structure has been built up with the, the uh, school department as well. And so there is an issue, I, and I think it's been acknowledged as a, as a real issue at the, at the school department. Um, it was brought by the proponent uh, to the Human Rights Commission. My understanding is that there's now there's a joint committee of the school department and the Human, Human Rights Commission which are jointly looking at this problem. This is long, hard work and what I hear is seeking some kind of a legal cudgel to be, to be added to the, to the uh, toolbox of, of the Human Rights Commission that you know, seeks an easy solution for, for something that takes a long time and a long, hard work to uh, resolve. So, so what's your question? I'm sorry, you will not ask that. That was a question, that's that. a Q&A session, right? Yeah, and we will get so to what's that. The but you will not direct that, Mr. Harrington. Well, what's the question? I'm sorry, you will not direct that. What's the question, though? Please stop. Joe. What is the action that you're asking for? This is a well, citizen petition. Well, first of all, petition. Mr. Caro, I never wrote it, the word Orwellian. I just searched. I just searched. There's no word Orwellian. So I take offense at that tactic of yours. Second, you're not asking any question. Just I did ask you a question. And third, what are you seeking I to do, Mr. Oh, Harrington? Will you let me respond? I understand that you were part of the Human Rights Commission. That's correct. Was there an executive director at that time? The Health and Human, Human Services Director de facto served as the executive director. Were they there ever? Do they ever attend a meeting? <coughs> yes. In the meeting minutes, how come I don't see the <coughs> name? I invited uh, Christine Bongiorno when she was, well, she was Christine um, Connolly when she was appointed as Health and Human Services Director. And in 2011, you were on the school committee, is that correct? That is correct. Oh, you and what, is that the, but about yeah, what that, get answered first. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, I'm My question, question is, what are you asking us what are you asking oh, you ask as the same action? Question, refer to Mr. Dunn. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Dunn. Thank you, Joe. Diane. Um, I just want to say one of the things which doesn't totally apply here that would really frust me, frustrate me um, as a selectman and my current colleagues in some former is that, you know, we would call for Warren article here and sometimes reschedule. The proponent would never show up, so we'd vote no action and then we'd get down to town meeting where the first time ever the presentation was made. And in a handful of cases, what we actually heard for the first time in town meeting, it was something that we would have been in favor of. Um, however, the proponent chose, you know, not to come and tell the board what it is they wanted to accomplish and how they wanted to accomplish it so we could join them in it. I, I do appreciate the fact that Mr. Harrington did come here tonight um, and, you know, present sort of the basis, the root of um, his Warren article proposal. However, I will stop there. Um, th this is a matter of, of great importance. Um, I, I respect your right that you do have a plan and you don't want to tell us that that's something you want to do, um, but I am extremely uncomfortable on such an important issue that being asked to sort of blanket endorse some, something that I have no idea what the action steps are. I don't have any um, recommendations or opinions from town council. I don't have any guidance um, from the town manager in terms of if it's a one, two, three, four step 
um, recommendation, I'm just using up to the number four, um, what it, um, recommendations uh, Mr. Chatelain would have, whether that those were accomplishable goals. Um, I don't have anything from um, the police department, uh, police chief, or any other law enforcement official that says, yes, this is something you can do legally. Um, no, it's not. Yes, this is something, but it's a bit, you know, extreme, or perhaps it's not enough. Um, so I, I really think it's unfair that, and, but it's Mr. Harrington's right that he wants to present a warrant article. He doesn't want to recommend um, what it is he is proposing to do in terms of effectuating that. And, and the last piece that um, I would like to hear, would have liked to have heard from if we had the information presented before us, I think we've taken yeoman task to make our agendas and any materials available um, to everyone. I know a town manager and a previous piece of correspondence cited that he was at MMA or somewhere that where they highlighted the steps we've taken to be open and transparent and share information. Mr. Harrington has chosen not to do that, um, which is his right, but on a matter of such great import where I don't know what it is, what tools we're being asked to employ and anything else related to that and to sort of um, take a quote from uh, town council where saying, you know, additional tools may be needed, may be helpful, but they need to be carefully examined to ensure they're consistent with the limitations of a local government commission in both enforceability and scope. And I think that the quote from uh, town council attorney Heim sort of more articulately and shorter uh, encapsulates my remarks in terms of this warrant article. Um, I would, I would vote at this time, since there's nothing before me, except for maybe vote for an idea, I would m make a motion of no action. Second. So no second. question. So is this, I, I'm confused no, with you, your you new. You are not asked, you do not ask the question. No, I'm, but I'm no. asking you, Mr. Chair. Yes. I'm confused about the guidelines that you yes, sort of so improperly you? put forth, that you were gonna have a Q&A session. Yes, and, and that, then that's then part that of our deliberate. discussion as well. And we will and then deli you deliberate, so. We will deliberate then after so as well if we feel the need to. So you already made a before you've heard from the audience. Well, we can change okay, that motion thank anytime. You. Thank so you. So no Mr. question, right? Um, what it is is you're available in case we do have any questions from the question that was posed to you and your refusal to answer it. I answered I, Mr. Dunn. Excuse me, sir. I, I have no questions for you because I have hey. nothing to follow up on. Thank you. Thank you. No, sir. So, Mr. Harrington, I will be the fourth person to ask you, what is the action you're asking us to vote on? I want you to vote yeah. that you acknowledge that de facto discrimination is an issue that the town of Arlington wants to take seriously and wants town meeting to relook at the 1993 bylaw that established the Human Rights Commission. And make what changes, sir? Oh, well, that'll be up to town meeting. It's a town no, meeting sir. commission. We're asking well, you. Yes, sir. You asked me what, no, no. What no. changes do you want us to make to that bylaw? Oh, you don't have the understanding yet. How can you even decide what policy changes? We have an excellent human rights commission. We, if someone has special needs, we will bend over backwards. I am handicapped. Mr. Harrington asked for a chair, a table, and a microphone. He received those tonight. Uh, I'm quite comfortable with how we proceed and given nothing to vote on and this tape will be shown at town meeting if he does come up with something new that four of the members of this board asked him what specifically are you asking us to change, to do differently, what action and he has answered four of us the same way. There's nothing for us to vote on. I definitely support no action, recommend no action at town Thank you, meeting. Mr. Greeley. Um, thank you, Mr. Harrington. Uh, thank you, board. Thank you. Is anyone else here to speak? Yes, please, come forward. Hi, I'm Mel Goldsythe. I'm a current Human Rights Commissioner. Um, I don't have any remarks in direct <laughs> response to that because I'm not, as everyone else, not really sure what happened. Um, but I will say that the Commission is investigating the issues raised in the warrants and we're preparing a thoughtful response before the town meeting. Um, for instance, we're still gathering information on how HRC cases against towns are handled in other towns of our size. Um, if you'd like, we're happy to come back and speak with you again after our next meeting, which is in mid-March. Um, just if you have any specific questions, we're happy to look into it before then. Thank you very much. Okay. Any questions? Yes, Diane. Um, if 
I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Mel? Mel. If, I'm not sure if Mel, if you already have this, <clears throat> in, if it will help in your deliberations. I think what's very helpful to me, what's been provided, and that's one of my checklists of who I would want to hear from, so you're ahead of me. Um, if perhaps we could provide Mel, and she can take to the Human Rights Commission, I think the comments in summation, based on the very limited amount of information that we had from the proponent that town council provided, um, th just a, another thing for you to consider so you have the same information that we have, unless you've already logged on through the NOAA's agenda and have gotten that. But I want you to make aware of that document. I think it might be useful in some capacity. That would be great. Thank you very much. So if you could contact the selectman's office at your convenience. Sure. Is that all right, um, town council? Of course. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Further questions? Seeing none. Is anyone else here to speak on this warrant article? Seeing none, further discussion from the board. Professor, are you sure? <laughs> She's already. Um, <laughs> um, is there uh, any further discussion from the board? I, I think we had a pretty robust uh, discussion earlier. Um, that being said, there was a motion of no action and it was seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Doug, are you a? I'm all set, thank you. Sorry, I will. I'm working on asking you before. Thank I you. forgot about two thirds of the time last year. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. Um, moving on. Article 10, bylaw amendment, description of the Mount Cabola Crescent Hill District. Um, I think uh, Attorney Heim is going to take the lead on this one. Uh, so very briefly, uh, members of the board, uh, I spoke with um, Stephen McCalka, who's the chair of the Historic District Commission, and the uh, essential motion that they're asking for is what's actually in the substantive warrant article itself is to basically correct it, administ uh, what they're calling a typographical error, uh, which essentially was revealed when they did uh, a review of the GIS map, that what's contained in the bylaws is not, in fact, the actual parameters of the historic district. Hmm. Thank so you it's limited much. to this one district, and um, it's a very straightforward administrative matter that, to be on the safe side, they're asking to uh, have uh, changed the town meeting. I believe also Mr. Warden uh, reviewed and helped prepare this particular article. Thank you very much. Questions for town council? This seems just, for, yeah. I'll just note that in uh, reading the prep work, uh, I, this bylaw has the longest sentence I've ever seen in my life. I think it was three pages long. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we have a motion? Um, uh, move approval? Yes. And thanks. just one question for yeah, the chair? Yeah, please. Um, if it's something that's really a Herculean task, doesn't need to be done. Um, I did go through the reference material that we all have. We all have gone through it. Um, if in the future, and it, if it's really hard to do, no big deal, um, that we could sort of have something highlighted, italicized, bold, that shows us, or a, a light strikeout that actually shows the correction, or? That's uh, a good, uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Pond, that's a good point. I'll make sure to do that in the future so it's all that much easier to read what's a very, very long single sentence. Because I did read all of that, and I couldn't even begin to pinpoint if the southwesterly and the south, and like I didn't know what was changed, and I, I'm, it's just a, a grammatical correction and, and, and totally. So if it can be done with technology that's not an arduous task, that's great. If not, no big deal. I should have taken the time to call and say it's, what is the correction. It's not at all, and I'll make sure to do that in the future. If that's okay. Yeah, of course. Thank you very much. Um, Further discussion from the audience regarding this warrant article? Seeing none, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Further <coughs> discussion from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, uh, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, moving on, Article 11, the uh, bylaw amendment to establish the Community Preservation Committee. Adam, do you want? Um, <coughs> so, uh, members of the board, what you have before you is um, some background information as well as a uh, draft motion that codifies uh, the specifics of what a community preservation committee uh, would be composed of, uh, how they're select not only how they're selected, but um, their terms and other important um, matters to basically set forth. As you may recall, the CPC is necessary to expand any CPA funds that will begin collecting in fiscal year 2016. Now, the law requires uh, five specific members, so we have no choice in that, but where 
given discretion to have as many as nine members and to uh, select where those nine members will come from, how they'll be appointed. There's a fairly wide range of options that are available um, to communities in terms of how they could construct uh, this committee with those additional four members. I consulted with uh, the town manager, uh, proponents of the original CPA article last year, I reviewed other towns' uh, CPC bylaws to develop this base model which addresses the majority, I think, of Arlington specific concerns as well as uh, take some of the valuable ideas that have come up since other communities passed the CPA, revised their CPC bylaws to anticipate certain issues that come up. Um, there was a fair amount of uh, discussion among uh, some stakeholders of how to uh, best account for the uh, other bodies that would need to weigh in on important matters of the CPA, especially given town meetings vote uh, last year and a lot of the discussion around it. And so you'll see that there's incorporated in here some mechanisms for uh, important bodies like this one, the Finance Committee, to have um, some opportunity to speak on the uh, projects and presentations of projects that um, the CPC will develop as well as their administrative budget. I'd be happy to answer any specific questions that you have about it, but I think it, for the most part the memo in the bylaw speaks for itself. Thank you very much, Attorney Hunt. Questions for Doug? Do you want to go for? Or do you want to go first, or do you want me to? I have like six things, so you might take one of them off the table. If that's yes, all right, that sounds excellent. Mine's not a small thing, so uh, <laughs> we'll see what the board uh, feels as always. Um, so, um, it, and I know we've had a brief discussion on this before. But I'm looking at, under the vote, voted that the town hereby amends Title II, et cetera, Section 1, Establishment and Membership in uh, A, and at the very bottom, uh, and four at-large members appointed by the town manager subject to approval by the Board of Selectmen. Um, I feel that, first of all, I have a million percent confidence in our town manager this is not a statement related to him at all. He's done an excellent job with all the appointments he's made and has an excellent process. But this is, what, this is now using taxpayers' money, 1.5% uh, on the property, and it's a surcharge on the property. And uh, if we look at the goals of this, uh, <coughs> open space, historic preservation, housing, uh, recreational activities, they are directly in line with a lot of our goals and objectives as a board of selectmen. And I would like to feel that the four members that are appointed are going to reflect that and be aware of things like, let's take housing. If a $50,000 housing grant were, were to come from the Community Preservation Committee, that would affect, in my opinion, what we now decide to do with our CDBG funding, or vice versa what we do with our CDBG funding, I certainly hope would be considered by the Community Preservation Committee in terms of that which they also would award. I agree with the manager and others, it should be a nine person committee, the more the better. I agree with all the goals and regulations, I just feel we the Board of Selectmen should have a little stronger connection to those four appointments. So I, I would like to move that we change that section to read that the manager with one selectman, I'd recommend that be the chairman, but we can discuss that. But as we do with CDBG, those two conduct the interviews, et cetera, and those two bring before this board with the manager also having a vote in the same way we do that with CDBG. And we, with the manager, appoint, make the actual appointment of these four individuals. So. That's my motion, maybe not clearly stated, but questions or arguments? I'll second the discussion. You have a second discussion? Diane. Um, I have had some sort of impromptu conversations, only with one member of the board today, um, but also with um, town officials and um, citizens and town meeting members. Um, I am in support of what Mr. Greeley um, is putting forth in the sense of I'm looking at the process and trying to think of a way, which Mr. Greeley has already outlined, 
that it works the best, um, more, most expeditiously. I think it would be a benefit um, where this board was and is so tied to the Community Preservation Act, and it would be an aid to have a chairman and or his or her designee um, at the initial stages um, with the town manager um, on such an important decision that does affect the community. Um, we've done similar models in the past, um, and it's worked very well, including looking for a town manager. And I think it will aid in terms of um, having two people there, somebody from the Board of Selectmen and the town manager, in terms of exactly what Mr. Greeley spoke about. Um, there may be a goal or a mission or something that we voted, and I, I don't expect, but it has come to fruition, that the town manager knows every single one of the things that are really important to us and what we've set it as goals and things that we've highlighted. It's sort of like a uh, check and balance um, to have a m member of the board sitting there. Um, and again, the end process is still the same. The town manager, um, and if this is successful, town manager along with um, the representative from the board of selectmen presents names to the board for approval. Um, but I feel like it's the process is less cold if we have a selectman um, involved in the beginning with the town manager. Um, and so we're really not changing the end result, in my opinion, and anybody please disagree, which is a recommendation comes before us under Mr. Greeley's model, it would become before us from the town manager and the designated selectman, chairman or otherwise, but ultimately we still have the final uh, approval. So um, I'm really inclined to support this. Thank you, Diane. Um, Dan. It's, uh, it's just an interesting idea, because, uh, and I had, I've, uh -oh. I, I, no, I, 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 yes. <laughs> it's the I word. <laughs> it, I'd, I've spent, a, you know, I'd spent, I've done a lot of conversations with a lot of people about the structure of the board, and this is not one of the models that I thought about at all. So, you know, it, I, and, and I, you know, I tried to reach it today. Sorry, Joe. I had a it, phone tag. Yeah. It's the no problem. Yeah. Uh, the so I had actually started like you know if you'd asked me the day after town meeting what should the board look like my answer was four members appointed by the, like I mean the five obviously and four members appointed by the board of selectmen but I came around to to appointing by the town manager because I think the so much of the budget functionally is the manager's document and so the manager has his you know he put forward the draft he put forward the capital he records the capital planning committee he's as you said the capital uh, cdbg like every aspect of the budget one way or another the man so like all lots of people tug and push but he's got the budget and he carries it in the end um, you know through town finance committee to up to town meeting who of course has the final say and um that was what moved me from the board of selectmen should appoint to the town manager should appoint, and now you've come <laughs> up. Uh, now you've thrown me a curveball and you've said it should be both, and I'm um, pretty. And so you you're saying the manager and des and des chair whatever do interviews. The chair and the and the manager make a recommendation of these four and on a rotating basis annually. And then you're saying six votes? Six votes. Six votes. And may I just add one thing? So we actually appoint, not approve. The six of us appoint those six four of us members. appoint. Right. Just like we do CDBG, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. In terms of the six of the manager. Mm -hmm. And he's on board, no question about it. Could I make one more point and then I'll shut up? Uh, you or please I shut continue. Up you're, you've well, have any. I also feel. We represent the community more than anybody else in this community. Uh, more than anybody else in this community. So I don't know. I get. I just want more say in it. I guess is what I'm, what I'm trying to do. And if people want to perceive that's grabbing power or whatever. It's. it's I'm trying to align, and I think you're absolutely right. The, 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 but when it, when what about the day this guy isn't sitting in that chair? Uh, We'll never get someone as good. Well, you know, I mean, I'm sure we could, but. You know. Okay, Mr. Chapter. Is, Andrew, a copy of is, Andrew, is Andrew available right now? Is yeah. uh, but but I'm, I'm, it's the, you know, um, I, I want those four members to know what we want. 
And the people put us in these seats to try and set that vision. Uh, he understands it and will defend it and do a better job of articulating it and budgeting it. I, I agree with you. Uh, but. Bill Sit, Mr. Greeley. Perfect. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Kier. I think I'm moving uh, towards this. I had been thinking along the lines of a town manager appointee approved by the Board of Select because I was, I was thinking a lot about these issues because of an upcoming warrant article that we're hearing tonight um, and looking at all the various committees and the structures that, 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 that are, are used for appointments. Um, and, and I would note that, you know, to your point about making sure that we, we have input at each stage of this, this process that um, the draft language that Mr. Heim has put together does go quite a measure beyond what a lot of other communities do by specifically calling out the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, and the Capital Planning Committee as having liaisons to the uh, CPC, as well as requiring that the CPC uh, present the recommendations for comments to our board, the FinCom, and Capital Planning before they, before they uh, give final approval to make sure that that connection is there. That having been said, it, it does occur to me that many of the types of appointments that we do get from, from the manager, a lot of times it's a, a committee or a commission that has um, a connection in some, in some way to, um, to another department in town. And so there's some screening is often done by the, the director of that department before, be, before the um, uh, uh, applicants are sent on to, to the manager. And so it, it doesn't hurt to have two, two sets of eyes. And I think the, the suggestion of having a six, having the, the manager as a sixth vote uh, in these appointment decisions, I, I like it. I think I'm going to support it. Thank you. Um, further questions from the board before we uh, ask the audience for input? Do you, I, if you have something to say first pass, I don't no, want, we just have one more. You. Um, in an maybe effort we'll to, uh, ca um, do you have another comment about this actual issue or is yes, it something? Yes, I, oh, I please, guess then. I would Go put ahead. the town manager on the spot. I, I was just wondering if you had any strong aversion or any red flags, bells going up, that um, this is not a good idea or something, or Mr. Grill. Well, can I, can, please, well, I, I understand, but I just want to make one point. I think it might be only fair that we table this since it's all come up today, basically. And people are saying, you know, I'm just thinking about it for the first time. Mm -hmm. it, that may also hold true for the, how the manager answers this question to Diane. It, it seems sorry. like you I'm might have, um, it You're seems like you there. might have, yeah. well, yeah, before we <laughs> go on to table it, but Diane? If, if I could do the yes, chair please. to the town manager. Sorry, excuse me. It, no red flags are going off for me, save curiosity what the town council's opinion would be on having the six votes. Having shared responsibility between myself and a board member to do the screening and then make the recommendation, I think is a, 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 a fine idea. Uh, but I'm, I'm curious uh, about that six vote structure. Doug? The CPC doesn't provide a specific prohibition or allowance for this. It's really um, just a matter of how you arrive at those four at large members. So uh, on a technical level, th there's, there's not necessarily an issue with deciding to restructure it instead of having the town man or manager you know, a point with the consent of the selectmen, which is basically in function a similar process, but with two stages to doing it the same way we do this, the CDBG. So I don't have a concern that, uh, there's nothing that I can think of at this very moment that would preclude that type of structure because all you're doing is making the appointment. It's not messing around with the total number of members on the CPC. It's um, changing how you arrive at those four at large members. Thank you very much. Further questions from the board? No, anyone from the audience would like to address this? Clarissa. So uh, Mr. Harrington, oh. you weren't called up. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Clarissa Rowe, here as a citizen. Um, I also happen to be the chair of the Community Preservation Coalition and have been for 15 years. And <clears throat> while I usually agree with my esteemed colleagues, one of the things that has worked very well in the other 157 communities throughout the state that have adopted this is to have this committee be, instead of a top-down committee, which is kind of what you're talking about, have it be a bottom-up committee. And 
one of the things we talked about over the summer with Adam was trying to get some new people involved in this committee, um, younger town meeting members and people that um, haven't been involved as much. I would like to see that openness. Um, I, th I have no trouble with what you're suggesting, Kevin. I think it's fine. I think it's important for a new, co I mean, I have no trouble, as you know all, as you know, dealing with the finance committee or the capital planning committee, but I'm tougher than most people. And, and of course, I love working with you all, but I think you have to think about those nine new people that are trying to do something that's complicated. They will get some training. But I think it, um, since you're not taking this up tonight, I would think about it. If you have any questions, you can call Stuart Saganor, who is the executive director of the coalition. And they're basically, they're like a trade committee. They deal with 158 communities. They help Doug write this bylaw for you. They know where communities have gone awry and where they've succeeded. And where they've succeeded the best is when it comes up from the bottom and not down from the top. But whatever you all decide is fine. Thank you very much, Closer. Uh, are there any questions for Clarissa? Uh, yes. One Kevin. question, please. So <clears throat> please tell me that you intend to serve on this committee or intend to apply to serve on this committee. I might. You really won't commit that you're going to apply. I, I, you know this is something that's very dear to my heart. Yeah, 15 years. Yeah, well, more than that, actually, about 20. Hmm. Um, I, I want to make sure it's done right, and my ego is big enough so that if I think it's not being done right, I, I will definitely apply for the committee. Thank you. <laughs> Good answer. Thank so, you very much. Because I don't want it to be all newbies myself, but thank no, you. No, I understand that, and I think one of the things that happens is there's a very strong um, staffing from the planning department that helps us. So I think that the people that are doing the work on the ground, the planning department, the budget people that Adam's working with, will know about CBDG and you know where, how we can share the pot of money that's ever diminishing. Yeah. So I, th I think that there needs to be coordination and I see that possibly as a, as a staffing issue as well. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I like uh, coming back here, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, further questions? Seeing none. Anyone else from the public would like to speak on this? Yes, Mr. Harrington. Who chair? No, it shouldn't be my chair. It should be the chair for all residents. So, um, Stephen Harrington, town meeting member. I'd just like to say to the board that if you're going to appoint people, that you really should have a schedule for when you appoint them and when their terms expire and stick to it. If you look at the history of this board and their appointments, that really hasn't been done. And so I urge you, if you're going to take the authority to appoint more people, that you have a schedule and you stick to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions for Mr. Harrington? Seeing none, would anyone else like to speak on this warrant? Nope. Um, further discussion from the board? On this motion. Yes, on the motion in front of us. Right. So uh, to Mr. Harrington, that's delineated in the Warren article. To uh, Clarissa, who I don't like to disagree with either, we're not changing anything. Any new town meeting member, anybody can apply for this. And it's something I would look for in those who are that, provided we have Clarissa's and a few others of her type on the board out of nine, that we have some veterans. At, but, and I certainly would like to get new individuals as well. Uh, but I do believe there's a difference between, and I understand what you're saying in terms of the selectmen, uh, you, know, uh, you know, trying to be too strong or whatever. I want to be strong. I want to lead this community. I want to have a say in how we historically preserve and, and use open space and outside recreation and housing. We do that through CDBG, through our budget every year. I love her, but I disagree with her. I really believe we should do this uh, process that I recommend. Thank you very much, Mr. Greeley. Um, so I guess I'm the only one who hasn't really expressed my opinions on this uh, <laughs> thus far. 
Um, I, I did speak with Mr. Greeley earlier on uh, this issue, and I, I guess I just, I, I don't feel like it's uh, particularly necessary. Um, I think that the um, process set forth in uh, the warrant in front of us um, does give us uh, authority. Um, it gives us, you know, after Adam, who has done a terrific job in the past, um, screens the candidates. I, I think that there is a, there has been a pretty professional uh, screening process um, throughout at least my time on the board with everyone who is recommended to us for our approval. And I don't, um, I've never felt like I've been handcuffed by those recommendations either. I've been happy to support them. And, and if I did feel like perhaps someone uh, wasn't the right fit, I would still be happy enough to, um, you know, tell Adam that or voice that at a meeting. And um, that's why I, I think that this is a, um, a, pr a pretty professional process, one that we're all familiar with um, and one that's really um, done us plenty of justice in the past. Um, so I, I'd be inclined to, um, you know, keep it as is, but um, I also know arithmetic and I uh, kind of see where this is going, but um, that's how I feel. So further discussion. Would the, may I ask sir, would the board like more time? I mean, I've thought about it a lot to be honest. I'm ready, but I, I don't want to be unfair to my board members. Thank I'm you. I'm ready. Um, I'm not Dan. sure about my uh, So I would prefer the language proposed by Doug as opposed to your proposal, but at the same time, um, what, when it comes to what do we recommend to town meeting, I'm happy to support what you're, as in I really think that we should, we should do this, but we should do a bylaw. I would do the bylaw the way it's written now as opposed to the way that you're suggesting it, but so um, I don't know exactly how the chairman is planning on conducting the vote, but if the, you know, if, the, if, if, we're, if, we were, if we were to structure it as a vote of do we accept Mr. Greeley's proposed change to the language, I would vote no on that, but then I'd lose. And then there would be a vote on do we propose, recommend this bylaw to town meeting, and I would vote yes on that. So however you want to do yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think that that's probably the most straightforward um, process. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Mr. I don't, I don't think your, I don't think your suggestion is, is, is bad. It's interest. I like it. It, 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 it has a lot of merit to it. Uh, I just, I'm, I don't feel the same need that you do, I, I don't think that the process is improved by having this board weigh in as strongly as you think. I, I like leaving it in the town manager's hands. Um, I'm really unclear, so. What, sorry, what, uh, what is, what, about what I'm thinking? Yeah, you're saying you want to vote for this, but you agree with me. Um, you're changing, I, you don't agree with me anymore. I don't agree with you, All but right. at the same, but uh, it's like, it's not like a, I think you, you're suggesting, what I'm trying to say is you're not suggesting something that I think is a terrible idea and is an absolute, uh, that is absolutely not what I'm saying. I'm saying given these two choices, I prefer the one that's written right now. Okay. So you want to? Uh, just last ditch effort, um, just to, if I misspeak on behalf of anyone, please let me know. Um, like to get Mr. Greeley's recommendation. This is a draft document and yep. we have the flexibility to change it. What I heard from the town manager is that um, he's willing to work with this process. He has no strong aversion to it, uh, doesn't feel, it stop me anywhere if I'm incorrect. It would handicap him and he's willing to do it. And again, we're talking about the process and the titles. We're not talking about Mr. Chapdelaine and Mr. Greeley. Um, so your comfort level in the future, whether mm -hmm. any of us are here, um, what I heard from Ms. Rowe is that um, her main emphasis was really getting some new people involved so that we don't have a person who's on seven, eight other committees unless that's a person that we want. But basically what I heard her say to us is if this is something that this board wants to do, um, she again didn't have any strong aversion to it. So in, um, just in an attempt to, and I understand what you're saying, I don't want to vote no, but then if this language gets down to town meeting, you know, I'd like them to consider it. This is the only way it gets down right now. Okay. So you. that's my last ditch effort. <laughs> Further, Dan. Uh, I may have been, uh, I, I've said, since from what Mrs. Mahan said and the, in some of Mr. Greeley said, uh, I absolutely am supporting the, the like, I, I, I expect the, the, the Selectman's report is gonna read 5-0 because I support creation of this committee in either form. 
Okay. okay. Because we will have two votes. The first for Mr. Greeley's motion, the right. second for it in right. um, total. Okay. So, right. okay. So why don't we make that? Why don't we have that vote? We have a motion on the Mr. table. Mr. Girl, want to do it? He's, Come on. He's, well, he's, the, he's number three, I think. Well, so like, I, like I think, yeah, I know, yeah. thanks. I mean, my, my instinct initially is to just go with the process that we've, that we've used for other, other committees. Um, I, I'm intrigued by your proposal because it is. <laughs> it's intrigued. It's interesting. It is. It is, it is interesting. It, it is interesting. Um, but now as I'm thinking forward uh, to, few, to discussions and we're going to have in a few minutes, I think for internal consistency for myself, I think I'm going to have to uh, side with Mr. Dunn and Mr. Byrne on this. Thank you. Yeah. So we, I'd uh, like to announce I'm stepping down. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a uh, motion on the table. We have a motion to second all those. In and that is Mr. Greeley's, to be clear. Um, all those Which is a great uh, idea. It is. No, it's intriguing and interesting. <laughs> I'm willing to give it great. So um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Oh, wait, sorry. Whoa. Oh, oh no. no. Hit that gavel. Stop it. Yeah. No. I apologize, Mr. Chairman. I was already thinking ahead to the future, mm -hmm. and I was not thinking clearly about the vote that you just called for. If you would call again, I suspect I will vote differently, and I apologize so to the board for my mistake. We will retract that last vote and go again. Um, on Mr. Greeley's. Um, motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Aye. Bring up the vote. Um, now we will have a vote on the uh, bylaw, the establishment of the CPC. Yes. I still oh, have. You have. Oh, you have more questions? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I have some, although I'm a little scared right now. Um, oh, no. <laughs> Some that I think are really just procedural, cut and dry. Um, and bear with me because this is, I don't know if in the future, um, in terms of you know when we have this online and I type out comments and I have page references, I'm trying to do this so I'm not wasting everybody's time. Um, I still have to jump back and forth, um, especially on this agenda item. And I'm just saying this is information, um, where there are seven different reference materials um, and some of the comments are two or three different reference. So I don't know if there's any way, either A, um, and I do not use any of this at, for home, business, nothing. This is purely selectment. I don't go email on this. I don't print from this. But what would help me in the future in terms of coordinating my five comments to reference materials is either if A, there was a way that I could somehow hit something from here and they could be printed out perhaps in the selectman's perhaps office? Perhaps we can discuss novice changes at a different time. Okay, okay, I'll go to my this. changes then. I'm, I was kind of prefacing that why this is gonna look silly when I go back and forth. Um, okay, for this, I think this is sort of minor. On page seven, uh, I would ask town council um, on your memo of 2 2015, just in terms, and this I think is really small, in terms of continuity, um, where you have such member, if, and this is in sort of co comport with other bylaws and warrant articles, if we could change it to said member, just um, in terms of form and looking at other things, when we use the word such in other bylaws, it's such authority, such regulation, such, it, it refers to that sort of universe. And then when we refer to members and other bylaws, we change it to the word said. Is, do you have any, um, Aversion to that? No, no, Ms. Wan. If, if, I don't know if that's. That's fine. That would be mine. So that's sort of procedural. Then my second would be. Oh, no, don't go back again. Sorry. Back. I apologize. I have to get into my comments. Comments. This one. Okay, then my second one point would be, and I did discuss this with the town manager um, and Ms. Rowe to see if there were any red flags, um, on the same 2015 correspondence on page eight, um, I cited two places where, what I wanted to do is, you know, when we went out with the Community Preservation Act, we cited all the different things that we could do, and then in reading this document, I know it's inherently applied that um, this also benefits senior projects and, and senior housing. 
um, community housing inherently says, you know, um, means senior housing, but um, there's really nowhere in the document um, that we out and out state that and highlight that. Um, so I pose to the town manager and to Ms. Rowe, um, I lo looked at two possible areas. Um, I can't find it. One was uh, under 2A where we designate, we say that the um, Community Preve uh, Pre Preservation Committee shall meet with groups including, and then we list, um, I can't pull it up now because my thing's gone down, I'm gonna waste your time. It says Board of Selectmen, it says Finance Committee, it says School mm -hmm. Committee, Parks and Rec. Um, I asked if we could get the se senior um, sort of ownership, if we could include the Council on Aging um, in there. And is that something? through the chair, Mr. Town Manager. Yeah, so ba based on that prior conversation we had, if it was the board's prerogative, it could certainly include Council on Aging as a, a municipal body or board to be consulted with. Okay. And, and then the second place that I saw that maybe could go in, I'm just trying to make sure everyone has a, a visual buy-in, I thought under perhaps 2B, where it says community housing, we could put the language senior, but the Town Manager and Town Council um, have, have I, I think you told me that that's really structured and should stay in my. Yeah, I bet, and I'll let uh, town council speak for himself, but that B is primarily taken right from the statute, so I think altering that would be not recommended, but I don't know if you want to. I, I think, um, unfortunately, it would be a little bit, uh, go a little bit too far in suggesting an additional purpose outside of um, outside of what the law specifically says. Now, obviously community housing is going to include that, mm -hmm. um, but I, I would just, I, I, think it's, I think it's wise to take a conservative approach on this, this is essentially taken directly from the law. So my request would be under 2A, could we just add the council on aging? Okay. Um, then <clears throat> on page nine, I don't know, I might be stepping into Kevin territory here. Um, just to put before my colleagues for discussion, on page nine, two things. It's, it cites, um, and I can't pull it up, so you're gonna have to help me if I misspeak. 45 days um, after, I believe, the mm -hmm. process goes through in the Attorney General. Um, Section six, yeah. My two thing was to, to be very clear um, what the numbers of days were, and then I'm gonna ask you to entertain changing that to 30. But my first thing would be, I think it might be more tight if we put either 45 or 30 calendar days, 45 or 30 business days. Just oh. so we're very clear. Um, so first thing I would like to make sure is maybe we put after whatever that number is, if we mean calendar or business. Whatever that number is, I would ad advocate for business. Um, I'm also advocating for 30 versus um, 45. The reason for that is, you know, if you think of the timing, town meeting, this goes through, attorney general, um, we can get it anywhere the first to third week back from the attorney general in September. Um, 30 days from then, I'd like to see this committee up and running, you know, a month later versus a month and a half. Um, I, I don't know, I did not pose this question um, to the town manager and um, I, I don't know if Ms. Rowe, I don't wanna put her on the spot, but my thing would be I'd like to hear from the two of them am I totally off my rocker with this, but that, that that's my proposal. Let's define calendar versus business, and I'd like to change it to 30. Okay, well, um, we'll start with um, Adam or Doug, please. So um, my uh, immediate response would be 30 days is not enough time for, it certainly would be enough time for the five uh, independent, uh, the, the commission appointing authorities, I'm sure, to schedule a meeting and appoint someone from within their membership. Uh, if we're gonna follow the same process that the town manager currently follows for soliciting uh, citizen participation, we post for two weeks, then we go through an interview process, then we give the board notice of intent at one meeting, followed by a two week lag, and then actual uh, uh, request to uh, confirm an appointment. So that alone right there probably is 45 days. Uh, so I, I think you know a robust sort of deliberate process in, in that regard would be Warranted, and I, I don't think 45 days is, is too long. I think we could get it done in that 45 days, but I, I'd be afraid 30 days just wouldn't be practical to get done. And, and do you think, uh, do you have any particular feelings on calendar versus business in those 45 days? 
I don't, how do we interpret, how do you interpret bylaw now as? So typically, unless it's stated otherwise, once something goes past, say, 10 days, I usually assume that it's calendar days, um, unless, unless there's some clear indication otherwise. Uh, I'm not sure what the, I'm sorry, I'm not a, Good arithmetic in my head. I'm not sure what the what the how many days difference it is. 45, I'm sorry, 30 calendar days versus 45. I'm sorry, 30 business days versus 45 calendar days. It's probably about the same, um, roughly. But, but it typically, depends that's on the time of year. If we yeah. have Yom Kippur, okay. um, Day of Atonement, and then sure. I still have Clarissa. Oh, you'd like uh, oh, whatever? No, whatever you deem. Do you, Clarissa? Do you have any further thoughts? The only reason that I thought a shorter time period was better is once the committee is in place, they um, are, you're going to get some money next November. Um, they have to have a real series of a lot of public meetings before they are making any recommendations and putting them on the warrant. And you all have added a lot of layers of um, review by capital planning, review by finance committee, review by council on aging, review by, review by, and review by. Um, I think it would be great, you know, the attorney general doesn't usually get the warrants back until the end of the summer. Maybe, you know, doing some of the advertising, even though we don't have the warrant back, do it in the um, summer so you're, you're you, as soon as it comes back, you're interviewing. I just think you want to give the committee, especially in the first year, enough time to really go out to the public to really hear what they want to what what people want to talk about you know what are the housing problems the first year is really an inventory and it's to look at you know what what's what do we need to spend money on in preservation what do we need to spend money on in housing what do we need to spend money on in parks and, and open space we pretty much know already it's the other two where we haven't you know, with the CBDG stuff, um, the funds getting more and more reduced. Where, you know, where are the the um, programs that you've had to turn down in the past on CBDG um, that now could be funded by this? So I think it's oh, that's the only reason I think trying to compress it some is important because um, the first year is a lot of inventory and required by statute um, quite a bit of public meeting. So are you a 30 or a 45? I'm a 30. Okay, thank you. Thank and you. I'm 30, I'm a 30 calendar <laughs> <Yes>. day. <laughs> Kevin. Well, I, I was gonna make that point. I mean, the, the, the most, the time when people are most, I believe, interested in, in applying to serve on this will be shortly after town meeting. I understand it has to be approved, the warrant has to be approved first. But as long as we are communicating clearly that we are waiting for that step, it doesn't seem likely to me that we're not going to be approved for this since 157 other communities have already been approved. I think people should be ready for those appointments the day it does come back that it has been approved. And they've already done all the interviewing and all the screening, but all applicants should understand there is a final step. But is there anything illegal to that? Um, I, I would caution again. Do you, sir, to town yes, council? Please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. I would caution strongly against um, not allowing at least that 30-day period. I, there's, there's nothing that I can think of that would per se be problematic about starting to do some pre-screening while the bylaw is um, being reviewed by the Attorney General, considering that most of these provisions have already been approved by the Attorney General explicitly in some other community. So I think a certain amount of preliminary work can be done, but um, there's a lot of unknowns here, and I think it would be valuable to make sure that we've got at least that 30-day period to make sure that if anything goes wrong, we have a severability provision in here that we wouldn't ordinarily include in every single uh, bylaw um, that would allow this bylaw to sort of proceed if the Attorney General struck a certain provision, so that also gives us a little bit more security. But just as a matter of, of, of being uh, pr protecting our, our interest in this, to make sure that we're getting it right. I just wouldn't want to have a window that in the bylaw we would be setting ourselves up for a violation by not at least giving us ourselves that 30-day period. And I think the town manager can articulate better the ch administrative challenges as well as all of you. But, but I would keep that period in there. And if you want to do some 
preliminary screening with the understanding that the Attorney General's approval is absolutely necessary before any of these appointments can really be made, um, or any of the processes in this bylaw are required to be followed. Um, I, I, I guess I can't register an objection to that. Thank you very much. Second. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Joe. No, that was actually the point I was going to ask also, mm -hmm. whether we can start the process before it came back to the Attorney General. Sounds like we can. Um, we can start it early. I mean, I think 30 would be fine if we, if we can start it early. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I just, uh, I just want to be clear on what you're doing and what you're not. You don't have a bylaw. So you're basically collecting a pool of people that you believe would be a valuable addition if this bylaw were ever passed and you had a community preservation committee. So I, I just, I don't want to necessarily frame it as, you know, we can do whatever we want before a bylaw is approved by the Attorney General. I think you're just basically getting some of the legwork and the town manager could speak better than I could to that as to how feasible that is without a, without a bylaw actually in place and how aware the public will be of, of these positions being available. Thank you very much, Chuck. Do you want to add anything on? I, I guess that my only thought would be if we did get that early start, the, the timeline would then become far less important. If you did get it? Yeah. Okay. Dan. Uh, I'm sold on 30 days. And in particular, I'm thinking, so sometimes the Attorney General even comes back in August. And if they do come back in August, that actually is going to, that would, like, so as, let's imagine the Attorney General says August 10th. Now we have, you know, three weeks of August, the end of August to get all these committees together to make their appointments, Labor Day and then 10. Um, and that one d doesn't thrill me. Uh, so part of me is like 30 days or September 30th, you know, whichever is. Whatever the, comes first. Which, yeah. Uh, no, whichever is later actually is what I'm saying. And, but you see what I'm you see what I'm getting at. I'm how about the, let me re say I'm on board with doing it expeditiously. I'm on board with this getting this committee meeting as quickly as possible. I'm a, I'm not excited about doing a mid August sprint. And so anything along that solves those problems, I'm totally on board with. Um, okay. Diane, to my memory, I don't recall anything coming back from the Attorney General. I think we're happy if it comes back the first or second week of September. Has there ever been an August? I couldn't say for our no. I mean, if you go with the attorney general themselves, uh, they okay. have a 45-day right. clock mm. yeah, right there. The we're, we're lucky. We have to call our legislators to get something out that first September, week of September, and it's usually special legislation that um, we've been right. there. All the other stuff comes much later. So, um, okay. so I would still be a proponent of the 30. And I, if the majority or all of the board agrees with me on 30, I would leave it to the chairman and town council. Just where we're we have everything out there and everything is looked at so scrupulously and I appreciate people taking the time on that. If we take the extra um, added step of putting whether it's 30 or 45 um, calendar dates. Okay. So, so, um, so I guess um, I, I see um, obviously where this is going but I, I, I like the 45 days um, quite frankly. I, I think that we just had a pretty robust discussion on making sure that the right people are picked for this. And I think that what, what we heard uh, was that there's a, a pretty serious process that goes into ensuring that. And, you know, I don't think that 15 days is worth um, potentially disrupting the um, selection of the right candidates. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to uh, agree with the 30 days, but I'm, uh, I'll see. We, I think I have a feeling on how that's going to go. Um, but Diane, so further? That motion? Um, and that, that, actually, my next two questions are on another warrant article, so that would be my last one. That's your last one? Thank you. Okay, so um, the motion that we have is with um, Diane's recommendations of adding Council on the Aging, um, um, changing a word for said, and doing the... Um, 45, moving 45 days to 30 days. Um, and I guess I'm, I'm tempted toward doing this in, um, I guess it will eventually be three separate votes. Yes. The first of which, although, so the first 
for said. Um, we have a motion on that. Um, do we have a second on? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, that's a unanimous vote. Um, we have a motion on adding um, Council on Aging in Section 2A. Um, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's a unanimous vote. And um, finally, in Section 6, um, we have a motion to change 45 days to 30 days. Um, do we have a second? Second. We have sorry, a, Mr. Chairman, can I just clarify? It's 30 calendar days, correct? Yes. Okay. We have a, um, thank you, Doug. Um, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Four to one. Thank you very much. Um, and before we vote on the um, final um, bylaw amendment, um, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, so Move we... Move to reconsider. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Move that we recommend favorable action. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. That was a um, robust discussion and a helpful one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Moving forward, um, Article 15, a home rule petition pertaining to Board of Assessors changes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I have to, uh, I'm going to recuse myself from this discussion. My brother is uh, uh, on the Board of Assessors. He's uh, uh, unopposed, uh, running for re-election, uh, running for, to fulfill the one-year term. Um, and Doug, having spe spoken with the Ethics Commission, uh, we're using a very conservative interpretation. Uh, it's a very gray area, but to uh, remove any question, I'm going to uh, recuse myself and know that I can trust in the wise judgment of my colleagues on all matters. Thank you very Thanks, much, Mr. Greeley. Um, Ms. Loretti, how are you? Thank you for being here. Um, please Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Begin. Uh, Chris Loretti, 56 Adams Street. Article 15, as you've numbered it, makes a couple changes to the way Arlington's Board of Assessors is organized. And the first of the changes is to make the Director of Assessments, which is currently appointed by the Board of Directors, to make that position an appointment of the Town Manager instead. And the second change is to change the way the Board itself um, comes into office. Instead of being elected, they would become an appointed board, um, and I would see that as an appointed board of the town manager, subject to the approval of the Board of Selectmen. I believe the first of these changes is the most important one, and I'll speak about that first and, and at greater length than the other one. Um, and I base that, my feeling, on, on two premises. First is that when there is an opening that needs to be filled, and I would say this about any opening, the town should have the largest pool of candidates possible to choose from. And the second is that for positions like this, it really should be a professional appointment rather than a political appointment. And it seems to me that the actions last year when the Board of Assessors um, you, you know, forced out the previous assessor and hired a new one shows that that really isn't happening. And it seems to me that it's really in the best interest of the town to make this a professional appointment. I'd like you to consider a few numbers. Um, Last year, the town received a salary survey um, across all departments, I believe, and I think one thing it showed is that in general, the town pays its senior managers and department heads very well. And in particular, in, in the case of the Director of Assessments, Arlington's salary range for the Director of Assessments it tops out at a figure that is higher than any of the other towns that were surveyed. So what that says is among the dozen towns if you're looking for the highest salary, Arlington is the place you want to be. Yet when you look at the number of, of applicants the town got for the first round of, um, in, in the first time the assessors tried to fill the opening last year, they only received 14 applicants. In the second round, they only received six. I would argue that we should be seeing five to 10 times that many, on the order of 30 to 60 applicants for a town like Arlington when we are the highest paid um, 
you know, we're offering the higher salary among our peers. And I think that raises a question of just what's going on here and what's wrong with Arlington when we get such a, such a low turnout. I think the principals involved last summer uh, perhaps gave the best answers. And one of the members of the Board of Assessors himself was quoted in the Arlington Advocate as saying that the fact that people knew there was an in-house applicant may have deterred people. Well, really, I mean, what did they expect? If you're going to hire your friends and family, if you're going to make it an inside job, you really can't expect to get a, get a broad a pool of candidates applying. Now, after the assessors failed to appoint one of their own to the director of assessments position, you, know, you would have thought that it was an open um, competition and there might have been a much greater number of people applying. But that wasn't the case. As I said, only six people applied. Now, one of the candidates who applied the first time and made the top three, he didn't bother to apply. And he was quoted in your Arlington news outlet as saying, um, the problem you know, speaking of the, the board itself, he says the, the problem of its politics is too deep and, sy and systemic. And then he goes on to disparage one of the board members and talks about skeletons in the closet. Now, whether there's any accuracy to those claims or not about skeletons or anything else, I think it shows that there is that perception. And because that, there is that perception, Arlington's not getting a, a broad, as broad and deep a response to its... Uh, you know, to its, to its um, employment process for the director of assessments as it should be. So, you know, regardless of anything, you know, the, the, um, this particular person may have said, it seems pretty clear to me that the town is much better served having a director of assessments who is hired by the town manager, who is obligated under the Town Manager Act to hire on the basis of merit and fitness alone rather than to have that appointment made by a political body. And I'd also like to emphasize that this, there's really nothing unusual about the way this is done. Uh, other towns do it that way, having the town manager approve or, or actually make the appointment for the director of assessments. And I'd suggest it's also the normal way that department heads are appointed in Arlington, even when the departments interact with either elected or appointed boards. And I would. Um, you know, give as examples the redevelopment board in which you have a uh, planning director who is, um, you know, appointed by the town manager and also, but you also have an, a, an appointed board with which, um, in this case, she works with. Same thing happens with the Parks and Recreation Commission and the recreation director. Um, I would also argue that this change benefits the Board of Assessors itself because it takes away from them the obligations to get involved in, um, you know, human resource matters uh, administrative matters that are more like human resource um, actions that really aren't uh, part of their expertise and that they, they really aren't well equipped to handle. So I would see the, um, the director of assessments being an appointment of the town manager, um, as I said, just like any other um, department head appointment, and uh, he would hire subject to the requirements of the town meeting, uh, town manager act, excuse me. So the second part of the warrant article deals with the Board of Assessors itself. And I believe the town would be better served if the Board of Assessors was appointed. And some of the reasons for that are given in the Department of Revenue report um, you know, that came out a couple of years ago. And that report makes the point that the policy discretion of the Board of Assessors is really very limited. And it's limited by state law. It's limited by the Department of Revenue's own regulations. Um, you know, after Proposition 2 and a half passed, it requires all properties to be valued at 100% of their you know, full market value. That takes away any discretion from the Board of Assessors as to how the property should be valued. Um, the, the DOR report does cite one exception, and that being the hardship, hardship exemption, but those are very rarely given. Another point it makes, and, and this is one of the key activities of the Board of Assessors, is granting abatements. But those, it, you know, as the report says, should be determined based on the facts, and the information at hand, and they're really more of an administrative adjustment than they are a policy decision. Um, the other thing I would note is that generally there's a lack of competition in the assessor's races now you know, as, as an appointed board, I'm sorry, as an elected board. I've lived in town um, about 21 years, and I can, aside from Mr. Harrington this year and Mr. Throp a, a few years ago, I can't think of any other contested um, board of assessor races. And, you know, if that's going to be the way things continue, then that, that's no choice, you know. And 
clearly we have more opportunities for putting people on the board if it's appointed um, and then, then if it's elected if this is the way things are going to continue. And it also gives the, um, I think the town and, and by extension the public uh, a greater um, ability to vet who the, who the members of the board are. Again, if you don't have, you only have one candidate running, you have no choice. Um, and lastly, <coughs> I would argue it also presents an opportunity to save some money. The Board of Assessors in Arlington is the most generally compensated board in the town. If you include the, uh, I'm sorry, the insurance benefits they receive, and assuming they're getting the family benefits, we're talking on the order of eighteen to twenty thousand dollars a year per member for a board that may only meet a couple times a month or for a couple hours a month, and that would be another reason um, I think would benefit the town to make them an appointed board without those benefits. So, what am I asking of you? I would actually like to see two votes come before town meeting. One would be to make the, and I mention this because I realize there are a lot of people in town who who are very strongly attached to having as many positions in town elected as possible. And because I think the uh, first part of this warrant article is the most important one, I'd like to have two separate votes. And uh, again, the first one would be to make the, uh, the director of assessments and appointment of the town manager as I described, and to take you know, whatever action is necessary through home rule legislation to affect that. And then the second would be to make the board of assessors the uh, appointed board rather than the elected board. So I'll answer any questions at this point. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Sawyer. Questions from the board? Diane. Um, I appreciate that the proponent, um, initially I saw this as a one more on article, two action plan, and I was going to ask if you could separate out the two, but you've already had the foresight to do that, so I do appreciate that. Um, a statement and then a question um, through the chair okay, to yes. the town manager. Um, and I'm not sure if I'll have one for the proponent. Um, 22 ideas came out of that report from DOR. A lot of time and effort went into it. Um, we had an initial pass that sort of um, passed it in, in, in toto, um, you know, but then we had the school and town side. I do not agree with all 22, and this is just me personally, all 22 recommendations in there, but I do feel there really were some good, viable um, recommendations, A, as well as B, um, I think where people um, weren't comfortable, whether it was the town side or the school side, embracing all 22 and hit the ground running with all 22, I, I would appreciate, appreciate the opportunity if my colleagues agreed um, on taking some positive action on some of those 22 recommendations. Um, Mr. Loretti has already outlined this, and I just would, I have had a conversation with the town manager on this first because I wanted to make sure, you know, this is something I should even put forth before my colleagues. But um, I do think, um, to me, the most tantamount issue is um, the appointment of the director of assessors. Um, I think a much better process. Um, and my memory is from when we had the joint meeting when we were appointing someone temporarily when the Board of Assessors was here. Oh, no, when the Board of Assessors came in on this particular report, um, they spoke to keeping in an elected board, but what I heard um, from the members, and they're not here to speak tonight, they were saying if it was the will of the board to make the Director of Assessors, um, a not a selectman, a town manager appointee, um, and fall under, as well as day-to-day -day administrative reporting, as well as oversight, um, that that go under the town manager. So what I would like to do first is make a motion um, to approve um, on page 23 of the DOR recommendations, um, item number three, that the director of assessing be an appointment of the town manager. So that would be my motion. Second. And if I could ask the town manager whatever comments he wants to share on that, I don't want to repeat mr repeat a conversation we had uh just yeah very generally uh i think that having uh any day-to-day -day professional administrative position be accountable to a day-to-day -day management uh personnel so in this situation of the director of assessing being appointed and managed by the town manager would be an appropriate action thank you thank you further discussion joe um uh, thank you um and thank you ms mahan i i actually agree with a lot of what you said um 
the DOR process really, it included a lot of recommendations and there was a lot of time and effort put into it. I think I was, I believe I was one of the people interviewed during that process. Um, and I really supported the spirit of it, which, um, which included a lot of things. The core of it, as we know, was the creation of a municipal finance department. And unfortunately, I think a lot of the focus um, uh, was directed towards the treasurer's position. And unfortunately, I think we lost momentum um, as a result of that. I also, for the record, I supported, you know, looking at the consolidated um, school, school town finance department uh, as well. I, I think under Mr. Chapdelaine's um, leadership, I think we have very good coordination uh, right now, but um, I, I thought it was an idea worthy of, of uh, putting forward. We've never really asked town meeting, though, about this particular um, this, this, this particular um, aspect of, of the report and of the DOR um, recommendations. Um, my only question, I think, to, to you, Ms. Mahan, is that in recommendation number three, on page 23, it actually sets out several options. So it's, it says um, that some towns have addressed the problem by creating a dual reporting relationship where the board protects, provides a director with general direction, but the director receives direct day-to-day -day supervision from the manager. In other cases, towns have established an appointment process where the assessors screen and check the credentials of potential applicants and recommend one or more choices to the manager. So there's a set of choices even here within, within that recommendation that I think that if we're going to put something before town meeting, we have to be very clear about what we're asking them to consider. And I'd say further, I, I think legally we, uh, well, th this, this requires amendments to the Town Manager Act. Um, anyway, I, I have to say that I kind of liked the um, suggestion that um, Town Council had in his memo to us of actually pa packaging the two pieces as one home rule petition that would then go back to the voters for the for the change lock stock and barrel I I, um, I, I feel like uh, the changes work very well hand in hand although I, I can I can be convinced otherwise are you talking about both of the changes recommended? both of the recommended changes here I know we're just discussing the appointment so you would like the, the board of assessors to become an appointed board I would like it to go to the voters for them to, to, for it to be considered um, I'd like it to go to the voters to be considered. And, and I guess I would say to that, um, that's not the process that we're in right now. Yeah. Uh, I would like to get, if I have majority or unanimous ag agreement, Yeah. Um, I, I, I fear if we tie both of them together pick up on both. this, pick up then both. they both fail. And that's what happened. That's what got us in this vote anyways. Yeah. Um, and, and to your second question in terms of um, my recommendation is what that first line is underlined saying that the uh, board uh, director of assessors be appointed by the town manager and i guess what i would leave in, in terms of what the process of that would be i would leave it and tell me if i shouldn't do this i would leave it to um, the town manager to either follow in conformity with other um, appointments that he makes in the process that he has set up like i i don't feel qualified or competent mm. to define and if you all do and you're better qualified than me to direct the town manager how to do that. I feel like he, you know, what I'm asking him to do is to not only make this appointment consistent with what he's done with other appointments, department heads and, and otherwise, I'm also asking him, and I think it helps the board of assessors as well as the director of assessor, that he also be there as the day-to-day -day managerial um, administrator overseeing this person. And I think it helps the current and future director of assessors that they do have that you know, go-to person when they're in town hall. So, if if you could, Mr. Kerr, I would I would like to keep I'd like to keep as I my said, I could motion. be con convinced. Okay, sorry. Could, could I follow up on, on, yes, on my please. point though? Um, I, I think to Ms. Mahan's point, I think Mr. Loretti raised a couple of examples of some of the boards that we have in town. I spent a lot of time combing our bylaws on the town's website and the Town Manager Act this weekend, and I must have come up with a list of twenty or thirty boards and commissions and committees <coughs> of various levels of responsibility in town that, that have um, town manager involvement in the appointment of the, the board and the associated professional staff is generally um, appointed by the town manager. I think the redevelopment board is the most obvious example. They have a lot of fiduciary responsibility. The board of Health is a big obvious example as well. They have a big um, responsibility, big impact, but they follow, uh, follow this. 
last year we had a discussion on the cemetery commission and I think we all decided that it was um, you know it was best keeping it as is as it was changed in the it was actually changed in the town manager act to an appointed board so if I'm not putting on the spot mr. Chaplin I know that every board and commission is different but some of the more visible boards with a lot of fiduciary responsibility could you generally outline the process that you that you do to and I understand you haven't had that many opportunities to appoint directors yet but your kind of philosophy on on uh, an appointment process yeah so in in very recent history uh, the library board of trustees had a seat at the table for the recent library director search uh, the AYCC board or the Youth Services Board, uh, though not one of those higher responsibility boards that you laid out, uh, had one representative as part of the screening for the AYCC director. Uh, and I uh, inquired uh, prior to my time here in Arlington, uh, it's my understanding that a member of the redevelopment board also sat on the screening committee for the most recent appointment of a planning and community development mm -hmm. director. So I think practice has been, and I would certainly, you know, I very much believe in the practice of including some form of board or commission input in a screening process where, uh, you know, the manager has the appointment authority, but there is a relationship with, uh, with a board. And what is the role of um, the Human Resources Department? Uh, so the Human Resources Department, I think in all of those examples, would be both the administrative role and then also serve as uh, part of any screening and review uh, and interview and help uh, you know, make a recommendation and final decision for hiring. Okay. Thank you very much. Dan. Uh, I apologize if this is uh, in the, the packet and I missed it or it's been in. Have, have the Board of Assessors weighed in? Have we received any correspondence from them? No, we have not. Have? It uh, wasn't in my packet. Have we received not any? in the packet? I did. Uh, I, I did reach out. Okay, but the, we haven't heard from them yet. Uh, it? No. Okay. Everything that uh, we reach okay. out to most departments for all of them. And this is all we've gotten back for right. all of the Warren. Objects. I was just double checking that I hadn't missed it. Like, yes. I, I, yeah. I, I, um, so I, um, I think what I would probably like us to do is to. Uh, I, I don't think I can support the uh, proposing a change without hearing from. The board of assessors uh, more directly, so uh, perhaps a tabling at some I'll point of this is in order. I'll take but, that I, too. But, I, um, but specific, let me articulate a little bit about why that is. So there's a lot of stuff in the DOR report that I think we should do, and I fought really hard to get it. Uh, to like, I thought one of the things that we was trying to create like the grand bargain in the government committee, the government redesign committee and stuff like that. I thought we could come up with something where we would change a bunch of institutions in Arlington for the better. Um, and unfortunately, <laughs> we're unable to get to a consensus. And that's why when we look at the last time the board revisited this issue, you know, with kind of heavy hearts, we recommended no action. And my thinking on that hasn't changed. Like there's no, even if I like so like if even if this is like, the actual right choice, which I think it probably is, I don't think that the f if the board of assessors isn't on board, the fight and the cost of that fight to us as a town and the acrimony and, and the pain is not worth the improvement that we'd get. So uh, if the board of assessors, as you uh, you know, is amenable to the change, then I think that yes, we should absolutely work with them and we should make it happen. If they're not amenable, um, it's not a fight I want to pick. I'm happy to table it. And I'm just going from my memory of our discussion when we had the DOR report. But I don't want to say 100% sure. equivocally that that's still their position today. So yeah. I'm happy to table it and let the chairman determine. Well, okay. yep. I'm done. Thank you. Happy to table it. Um, I'm going to take more comments from the audience. Mr. Harrington. Stephen Harrington. Um, candidate for Board of Assessor. Uh, one thing you'll notice about a lot of these warrant article hearings, there's not many this year, is that none of the people who are affected actually show. So the comment that the Board of Assessors isn't here, you wonder why. When I had my thing, there was no one from the Human Rights Commission that was the executive director, an employee of the town. So I think that it's important that you consider this very carefully. I looked at the last two years of what the Board of Assessors have done in preparation for my own candidacy. And what I noticed is they spent about a third of their time on personnel issues, about a third of their time in executive sessions for abatements, exemptions, 
and appellate tax board meetings, and about a third of their time on other random things. And that personnel time, we, this isn't like the treasurer hiring people in his department. He's a full-time employee. The board of assessors is part-time board. It would be like you guys hiring someone. And they spend literally months going through, because their meetings are so infrequent, going through the decision to buy back vacation time or sick time or get rid of a copy of lease. And that's not really a good function. So I urge you to support, and you should consider it tonight, to put it out there, to allow people to respond to it. Because if you don't put it out there, no one's going to respond to it. Um, that you actually make it the change. And I, I'd like to see a hybrid where the director and all the employees are hired by the manager with approval of the board of assessors. And I think that's an important component of it. So it's collaborative that everyone agrees to who they're hiring. But I think that in anyone's mind, certainly in any role that I would choose, I would love to see that personnel component off the shoulders of a part-time elected board. And so I think that's very important. On the second part, I completely disagree with Mr. Loretti. I think that it's important that the town does have an elected board for that position, not just because of my own selfish running for candidacy, but the difference between the Board of Assessors and most of the other things in the town, that they decide on the tax policies. And while it may seem that you know, it's all coded because it's 100% valuation, it's actually an impossible optimization problem. To get the valuations exactly right is literally mathematically impossible. And so there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be people coming and asking for an abatement. There's going to be decisions to be made on settling cases in front of the appellate tax board. Those tax things should belong to an elected board and so that citizens feel that they have a, uh, a place to go, that they have someone who can act on their behalf. And I think that's a very key part of an elected board, that they listen to citizens and do the right thing a lot of times when the computer program may not. And yes, the board of assessors should be more data science oriented, that the job is not the way it was 30 years ago. It's more towards understanding how to actually sift through massive amounts of information and coming up with fair valuations. And it's not something that you can buy from Patriot Properties. And they do rather a poor job at it, 1970s technology. And so I think that if you split this vote and that you actually move forward tonight and put it out there that, okay, maybe the Board of Assessors will come here and explain it. But if you don't, I don't think they'll be here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, questions for Ms. Harrington? Um, seeing none, um, I don't, is, would anyone else in the audience like to speak on this warrant article? I'm seeing none again. Um, so there is a motion on the table, and uh, I believe it was seconded by Ms. Mahan. Um, I, and I under, have the understanding that <clears throat> it will be a separated vote um, when the time comes. I like the idea of um, hearing back from <clears throat> the Board of Assessors on this. Um, that being said, right now I do, um, I do not agree with either of the proposals as set forth. Um, that's um, for uh, a myriad of reasons. Um, the first is that I agree with the uh, previous speaker actually that um, it just should be an elected board. It has a um, direct impact on um, every single homeowner and I do think that holding, uh, being able to hold them um, accountable um, during the election seasons is very important. Um, and then when it comes down to the director of assessments, um, one of the, I think, uh, main arguments that we heard tonight is that the board doesn't have the, you know, I don't, let's say the capabilities to hire um, a director of assessments that they don't have the HR experience. 
and you know that's why they use um, the town's HR department as well as the town manager's office in the hiring process. Um, you know, the town manager is currently involved in doing that, and as is HR. And I think that there's a really good um, working relationship in making sure that um, the right people are um, hired for that role. Um, and go, going back to the DOR report, I, um, you know, I, I, I agree with a lot of what the DOR report said. I, I was on the um, consol the consolidated finance working group for um, when I first was elected to this board, and I fought tooth and nail for those changes, and uh, I felt really passionate about it, and I liked them because there was a whole fleet of changes that we could implement together. And if we are going to look at addressing, um, you know, uh, addressing the professionalization of a finance department, I don't think it should be done one at a time. I think it should be done um, with a, um, having everyone involved and having everyone at the table and proceeding in that fashion. So um, that being said, there, there's a motion to the table, and um, I'll support that, but I'm, I'm going to need some uh, pretty serious convincing otherwise. Um, is there any further discussion from my colleagues? Dan? I just, uh, could you clarify what motion is it that you're wanting um, to? To table. Oh, okay. All right. The entire thing or just Ms. Mahan's motion? You know where I, I was I've under made the so many, I'm going to leave it to you all. What I, you I was do? under the impression that you were attempted to just that. Table. I actually hadn't formally made the motion because I wanted to hear what oh. other people have said. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Uh, yeah, uh, but I and would. I moved that I would table my motion, which was the first part, to um, vote favorable action to have the director of assessors be appointed by the town manager until we can hear from the board of assessors. So I yeah. pulled that off the table. So the second part of it, which is the elected versus okay. appointed, I'm going to keep my mouth shut and see what somebody else. I don't want to monopolize. I have a motion, but I want to see what you all want. Uh, I'm going to suggest that in, in, in that case, if, if you're amenable, just withdraw all motions and, and, and move to table the entire warrant article until the Board of Assessors is able to appear before us. Second. Yeah. Yeah. Through the chair, I don't know whether they need to appear or not. I, or or I, submit testimony. I'm just looking for their opinion. Submit testimony. Um, through the chair. Of course. Now. Andy would like that, and this board would like that on both considerations, both on the whole other, article. Because I, yeah, I, I have, you know, yeah. I'd be comfortable moving forward with the elected part of this um, this warrant article, and then waiting to hear back on the um, director appointment. But if uh, the board feels otherwise, I'm I mean, I would have a motion on that, but I. I'll so I can say my sorry. Go ahead. No. My position on both of these is no, unless the assessors are interested. So, if your answer is, if you're about to put forward a motion of no, that and the perhaps the board of assessors will surprise assess, then I would. But uh, I would move no action on recommending that the board of assessors be changed from an elected um, committee to appointed. Second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion from the board. Could See. you just repeat that one? Sorry. I would. I would ma make a motion of. No action, no action um, that the Board of Assessors go from an elected commission committee to appointed. Is that? Yes. Um, second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Oh, shoot. Um, that's a three to one vote. And um, a motion to table the other recommendation. Um, is on the table. Um, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Moving on. Acceptance of legislation for the Complete Streets Program. Uh, Laura. Laura Wiener, Assistant Director of Planning. Um, I was here before you a few weeks ago to tell you about a new state program um, that the legislature. Oh, I'm sorry. Can we go get Kevin, please? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, 
Good memory. I'm not even. <laughs> He's sitting there overnight. <laughs> Tuesday morning when they come in. Uh, okay. Oh, God. <laughs> Somebody better get that ACMI and destroy that tape. Mm -hmm. How we've missed you. Finally, where have you been? Two more acts on the voice I had to miss. <laughs> Couldn't stretch it out. Pleasure to have you back, Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, Laura. It's quite all right. I'm Thank Laura you. Wiener, Assistant Director of Planning. Um, I was here before you earlier in the month on a, a new state program called Complete Streets that um, is being run out of MassDOT. Uh, it's a, going to expect it to be about $10 million a year for um, construction and design of complete streets, which is defined as streets that accommodate pedestrians, bicyclists, vehicles, transit, and freight. Um, the, the, uh, in order to get funding, a town or city has to be certified by MassDOT, and one of the requirements is that this, the town or city accept the legislation, and that is what this warrant article is about today, um, for town meeting to accept the legislation so that the town can move forward to become certified as a complete streets community and then apply for funding for um, street design or construction. Um, some of the other things that will follow are the board will have to adopt a policy on um, what Complete Streets will look like here, how and when and where we will um, apply the policy. We have to set a mode shift goal um, and uh, a couple of other small things. TAC has, uh, has created a working group to work on some of the um, nuts and bolts of the policy and we'll be bringing that before you in the next couple of months. But for right now, we're just really dealing with the um, warrant article to accept the legislation. So moved. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you very much. Um, questions from the board? Um, yes, Diane. Second. Um, two questions. Uh, the first one's sort of just rhetorical. I think I already know the answer, but I just want to say it so we show that you know we're having the conversation. Um, when I went through the um, memo provided by town council of February 20th, um, 2015, um, and especially around page 37 where it's talking about p parameters of complete streets and um, where there's no specific verbiage, there, you know, there is for bicycling and, and walking <coughs> and things like that. It's inherently um, understood that also in that are any handicap accessible um, improvements. I mean, I know there's a federal law, but I just kind of wanted to get that out. Right, right. Um, I, I think, you know, as with the Mass Ave rebuild, it's a requirement of the funding that um, it become handicap accessible. So we're putting in new ramps everywhere on okay. every, at every okay. intersection. It's just as I went through reading the language, you know, kind of again with the senior and the COA not seeing the actual words knowing they were applied inherently. But now we've had this conversation. And, um, and then my second part, and I did have a somewhat detailed conversation with the town manager on this today to try to circumvent some of this. It's on the uh, correspondence we received from the director of planning. It was just a one-page memo sort of outlining, um, I actually want to go to it, sort of outlining um, what this process is. and. I anticipate that this is just to get it on the table, but we'll be setting the policy and um, other things once it gets to town meeting and the legislation, town meeting adopts it in the legislation. The only thing that um, I would have, want, I would want future details on, and if anybody, the town manager, or Ms. Wiener, feels there's something you can add tonight real quick, was um, uh, item number five where we talk about establishing, and this is going to be a tongue twist of the second part, a municipal mode share goal. And then it speaks to that the state's mode shift goal is to triple walking, biking, et cetera. And it says, though the town does not have to be so ambitious. So the conversation I had with the manager is first, a, we're not determining um, what that goal is right now. We're talking about the process, but um, 
when we do determine that, and I'd kind of like to put my two cents in, and if anyone has comment, if not, that's fine. Um, uh, similar to some of the other conversations that we've had, um, it would be my hope if a majority or all of the board agreed that when we do set the, um, Arlington's mode shift goal, that the parameter would be the town manager working in concert um, with the redevelopment board would then put forth um, Ultimately, I'm not expressing it the way I want to. You know. I, I think uh, I think I know. May I? Yes, please. Yeah. I'm tired. Uh, any mode share goal, uh, as I sit here, would have to be approved by this board of selectmen. Uh, the, the, the board is has the authority over public ways, authority over all traffic rules and orders. So I think this is the appropriate body to adopt any mode share goal that we would thoroughly vet, that we would research, see what's financially reasonable, what's sort of practically reasonable within our existing infrastructure. Uh, and then have this board vet and approve uh, any mode share goal that we would try to achieve. I think I'll just add the role of the ARB in, in this is only on private development that comes before it. So I think the redevelopment board would wait until you created a goal, I mean a policy, and then would look at how to apply that on the projects that come before it, like the Brigham's development, for instance, not That's public okay. streets at all. Thank you very much. Um, further questions from the board? Um, I guess the, the one question I have, so um, uh, this, I guess I'm just trying to simplify this. So we're, we'll do these steps that are outlined. Um, we'll establish a municipal uh, mode share goal, and after we hit that, that is when we will, when we hit that goal, that's when we'll be, um, you know, able to get some of this funding potentially? No. No, we just have to adopt it. You said to set it. You oh, to set to the goal. Wow. It. Okay, great. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'm surprised by that. They help pay for you to reach it. Yeah, that's nice of them. Um, okay. Um, further um, questions from the crowd? I'm seeing none. Uh, further discussion from the board? Yes, Dan. I think, uh, so I'm happy to support this. I think that this is going to be uh, an article that where the selectman's report is going to be really important in how it dis communicates this. So I mean, definitely, I get the memo, uh, but, um, but I think if you, but you know, town me town meeting is is appropriately leery of things that constrain over constrain us, and this. I'm so happy to support this because we, it doesn't really constrain us. I mean, it says you really have to talk about this and you really have to set a goal. And I'm okay, like that's good. I'm, I'm mm. totally on board with that. But the, if we don't say that clearly in our report, that's, I guess what I'm, I guess what I'm saying is that I'm gonna be really uh, picky about the final language. Rightfully so. Okay. Thank you. Um, further discussion from the board. I believe we have a motion on the table and I do believe it was seconded. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. And this vote. Mr. Chairman, can I just? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I okay. keep forgetting no, no, to ask you if you have enough. Oh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to. Uh, so, Mr. Dunn, would you like to basically parse out each one of the requirements set forth under Chapter 90I with a brief narration of? what that means in the selectman's report? Uh, I suspect that's probably too dense. I probably am more, I, I think my comments are more about the summary okay. and the, uh, the thesis. I think the, you know, the first 200 words are the ones that, that set what the, so I, I don't know exactly what the motion, like, I mean, I, I, I don't know exactly what the motion is that you have in mind, or if you have a motion in mind yet, about, like, literally what is, the, I mean, is the town, is town meeting going to say, we adopt 90I, period, you know, so moved. That, or is it going to? So that's, that's all that would be required. Yeah. Um, by the statute. Great. And the rest of it's really in the explanation of, of what that means. And, and that explanation is what I'm most concerned about. Understood. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I'll set. Oh, Mr. Greeley. Which is a statement, a clear statement that this board intends on s setting such policy. It's even actually more about, uh, so if you, frankly, if you told, if you, when you tell me, like, for the, the exact question that 
that, that Steve had just a minute ago. It's like, so when do you get the money? And the answer is, as soon as you set the goal, you, you, then you start getting some money. Like, that is not intuitive. And so that's the type of thing that we have to be really clear about right. so that people understand. And the other thing is, you know, like, okay, you know you only get, or maybe the money gets penalized if you, we just have to be really clear about what the benefits, what, what is it that we're actually committing to? What is it, what are the benefits that we're going to get and when do we get them? All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I agree with that. Um, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Adam. Just for what it's worth, um, Adam Oster was at the last board's meeting, or maybe the one prior, to address this when Laura was first here to mention the warrant article. And he likened this program with a similarity to the Green Communities yes. Act and the town's participation as a green community. I think maybe either as part of the selectman's comment or some other presentation, likening the two does make some sense because the Green Communities Act really was very similar. It had five different criteria you had to met. Some of them were promises and goals that you had to set, looking out five years out uh, with them giving you grant money up front. The most similar one was that promise to reduce energy use by 20% five years after your designation, which the town did achieve. But you certainly were given funding to help achieve that goal as part of the Green Communities Act. So I, maybe, maybe that's something we can use as a, a comparable to explain. <coughs> Excuse me. Sounds reasonable. Thank you. Um, moving on. Um, correspondence received. FY 2015 CDBGL. Move received. Uh, set to our limit on the Robbins Library, Whittemore uh, Robbins House parking lots, and parking on the west side of Mill Street. I'd recommend that uh, the parking um, issue um, that we received from Ed Star is sent to Tech. And I'd also like to uh, note that. Uh, it's a bit funny. Ed is sending uh, work to his previous committee so quickly. Um, but uh, other than that, I think uh, just other, the others being received is appropriate. Oh, uh, move so, receipt. And so I'll move on that. Oh, sorry. Dan, go ahead. Are you sure that we want this? So I suspect that the reason Mr. Starr sent it to us is because the cars that he's upset about are cars that aren't moving. Mm. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. And, I guess I was tempted to send it to Tech, yeah, um, because he was on Tech for so long and oh, and he asked actually that it really does. All right, he um, knows what he's talking about. Okay, I take it back. Yeah, and because I, I was, I thought that at first, but all right, um, Mr. Chairman, I, I withdraw my my concern. Thank you. And, and can I just say, I did have a conversation with the manager because within pa within the past eight months, Mike Rademacher was in here, um, and we were talking about that particular intersection. And there were some statements that night that perhaps the town had some plans, um, a recommendation by the bowlers to, you know, paint a designated straight or left as well as a designated right. Um, and perhaps um, what I'm wondering is to see if perhaps the town has done some of that work and we're already ahead of it, or are you still looking into that? Yeah, so I'll have to talk to the DPW director. I know he was before the board laid out that whole center mm -hmm. striping plan that included the striping you're talking right. about. So I guess whatever you find out from that, you through the chair, just to save tack, if there's any work yeah, to be saved. Can, so they don't have to revisit seven not issues if three have already been planned and are in the works. Good Thank idea. You. We'll send it to tack tentative on DPW's uh, recommendation. Yes, Marianne. Correspondence is just moved receipt. The second is going to be sent to TAC? No, the, the third. third. The third, third is going to be sent to TAC. The second is just going to be moved receipt. Okay. I just want to be sure in the third that we send that the letter is from Ed Starr, who was one of the first that informed us about the overload of work. On the <laughs> <laughs> is that a motion to highlight Ed Starr's name? Which he has name? now <laughs> retired and is sending uh, more jobs to the TAC, but I love him. Huh. Love them. Sounds appropriate to me. He may be just timing it to arrive on April 1st. <laughs> <laughs> um, that being said, uh, do, do we have a motion? I believe we do. So I moved yes. receipt of the first two and so moved the action you suggested. Thank you. Suggested on the do we have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Um, new business, Marianne. No new business. Doug. No new business. Uh, very quickly, a uh, brief snow removal update. Uh, we, we still have crews working uh, on snow removal, both uh, internal crews and external crews. Uh, we had overnight work last week. Some board members might have seen some of those efforts. Uh, we do not have an overnight operation plan tonight. 
Uh, we presume to be able to pick up an overnight operation again tomorrow night, uh, focused further on Mystic Street, Chestnut Street, and Pleasant Street. Um, and then following that, we'll begin to consider what we uh, may be able to do down uh, on some of the side streets in Capitol Square. Um, <clears throat> as, as the board knows, uh, every time we've made some progress, it's continued to snow. Uh, this weekend, I think we dodged a bullet, uh, mm. thankfully, and there isn't anything in the forecast. So hopefully, we will start to feel like there's a little bit of catch up being done. Um, we didn't send out uh, a snow operations email update today. We should have one ready for tomorrow, but just wanted to give that uh, brief update to the board. Thank you very much, Adam. Mr. Greeley. No, no business, sir. Thank you. Um, just three things. First, I want to commend the town manager and Joan Roman and DPW and everybody else. I think we've all commented on the size and the volume and the number of storms um, are not in concert with um, the amount of complaints and, and um, I've gotten more praise and thanks in terms of how this was um, handled. And I think a lot of it, I tell people, is you know, misery loves company. If, if everybody knows what's coming and they're and they're so informed, so I think you've really done um, not only the board of selectmen and your staff, but also the town citizens and businesses a great service. And um, I can't see you, you know, first time we've ever dealt with this kind of uh, volume. You've, I, I have to give you five out of five, ten out of ten, whatever it is for that. Uh, the second thing is um, an issue, and I'm just hoping that maybe somebody who sits here might actually know someone. Um, I had discussed this with the town manager also. It's kind of around snow. Um, I had gotten a couple of cheerleaders and, and basketball players and music students say that, you know, walking to the high school, mm. um, you know, you walk in front of First Baptist, it's shoveled. You walk in front of the house that's set back, it's not, and it's really, and then you get to CVS High School, it's shoveled. And then I got contacted by Mary Flynn, a former cheerleader, she lives on Newman Way, who's 25, who said she was running for the bus and fell and took a picture and showed me, because that's what you do. So, um, and, and this, so I contacted the town manager. Um, he and the police department, and now Marie, are aware um, it, there have been attempts, and this has happened in the past, and we have been successful, but it's always with a little bit of prodding and poking. Um, because that's such a well-traversed between the school and the bus stop, um, I don't know if anybody knows um, the owners. I think it's Hodgson or Noyes or one of the two. I know the town manager in the selectman's office is doing everything that they can, um, and uh, hopefully that, that will get resolved in the future. I'm hoping if anybody at home is listening to this and knows the owner of the of that property you might want to give them a call and say, "Hey, can you kind of pick away at that?" So not just the kids, but you know, seniors and everyone going to, to um, Whole Foods and, and whatever can have a clear traverse. So, and then my last thing in is, which is fantastic, uh, boys basketball team, 19 and one. My cheerleaders love to cheer for them, as well as every other sport we cheer for. But they're 19 for one. Um, they gained a seed, which means uh, the Got a pass from the first round. Their first tournament game will be this Friday night at 7 o'clock down uh, um, at the high school in the Red Gym. And they will be playing tonight's winner, uh, either Wilmington or Marblehead. And in the division, uh, Arlington was, the first seed was Danvers, 18 and 0, or 18, 0 and 1. Second was Arlington, 19 and 1. Um, love to see everyone come down, especially when you get into tournaments. I mean, it gets bigger and, and more exciting. And, and I want to say hats off to Coach Bowler um, for, you know, working with these kids, young men, and as well as conditioning them. And, you know, and plus they're really a great group of young men in terms of what they do for the community, as they do in other sports as well as other activities, you know, music and drama. Um, so really, come down Friday night, it, it's really exciting, and I know I get into it too much, but that's the time I get to go and I kind of forget about this hat and love to wear that hat. And that's all my new business. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Diana. Yeah. Nothing. Joe. Only one small thing I happened to notice when I was looking at the police blotter this week, that the very day after we had our discussion about the Minuteman Bikeway and Lake Street, that uh, a driver actually self-reported having struck a pedestrian going across the, uh, the, that area. So um, I know that the last time we had a lengthy discussion on this and we we're gonna get just a little bit more information about the support that, that could be provided to, to the design review team, but I'm ready to act when. Uh, happy to hear that. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. Um, do you want to follow up on yeah, that? Yeah, just very quickly. I, I had a very productive meeting with several members of TAC and follow up. <coughs> if not, by, God bless you. Very, very soon I should have an update on what our proposed next steps are to the board on that. I, I should note that the, according to the police plot, the pedestrian wasn't seriously injured or anything, <coughs> but, but still it just was a stark reminder. So, mm. Good point. Um, thank you, Joe. Um, so I, I guess I do have one piece of new business, and um, I know that we've talked uh, quite a lot at the past few meetings about our snow removal and how um, grateful we are for the efforts of everyone who has been involved in that. But um, one thing I don't, uh, one uh, part of this whole process that I don't want to be overlooked, um, and as some of you may know, it's, uh, it's, uh, I don't want to say it hits home to me, but it's uh, a little personal pride is um, the efforts that have gone into uh, making sure our town buildings are structurally sound and safe during this storm. And I think um, in, uh, Office of Inspectional Services as well as DPW have um, really put in a, quite a lot of effort and uh, they deserve our gratitude for doing that. So I am uh, just wanted to note that and um, with that, I guess there's no other new business. Do you have any names in particular there? That um, well, actually, I wanted to name, I wanted to say I uh, contacted the town manager over the weekend um, when I saw that DCR was closing five of its skating rinks, and I thought about our rink, which was kind of built at the same time, um, and he promptly had a conversation with the building inspector <laughs> for a pain in the butt, Mahan, who, which that's my characterization, <laughs> asked this qu question on the weekend, but they didn't cover the story and uh, got right back to me that a, we had snow guards in place so that the issue with the <coughs> Simeon, Sim, um, where the snow came down and buried everyone, that that has been averted and thought of, as well as um, he went down and, um, and I hope he wasn't too mad at me, um, and, you know, has been consistently checking that and many other structures and gave me the thumbs up through the town manager. So I do want to say. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, move to adjourn? Yes. Second. Second. <coughs> Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, Marie.